Warning, if you are faint of heart or easily offended, this show is not for you. And Valerie, one thing I don't know if you know recently about the card stuff, he went on one about that because maybe he just thought of it. Oh, he went on one about the cards because of the Mars incident and being able to see it. So then he went back to Hustler to attack us. And he's like, why wasn't the report? And he's doing this Twitter post. The GM of the of, of Hustler Casino, Sean Yapel, responded, cards were sequestered. You're wrong. I saw Bravo. that. Yeah, you did. Okay, so it's just like, shut How up. How are you going to argue with literally the GM of the casino shut who's up. in charge of all this stuff? Like, it, it's just like, it's not your business. It's not like, we don't have to do anything. We'll do what we want to do. And if you don't like it, then don't watch the show. Yeah. Well, well, I don't watch the show. I only watch once. This is not But pure. I have strong opinions this about everything that poker. happens on the show. This is not though. pure poker. Your commentators suck. All right, welcome to the Nick Fertucci Show. I am Nick Fertucci, and I am here with my co-host, Valerie Brill, and my partner, Ryan Feldman, back for a second time. Ryan, what's up? I'm excited to be here. Yeah, sure you are. I am. <laughs> yeah, well, you got my heart racing when about five minutes ago you said I just woke up and I'm getting in the shower. <laughs> so, yeah. I want, my plan was to uh, show up here and then text you, oh, shit, I just woke up, and then knock on the door. Yeah. But you... you contacted me before that so yeah well it worked i stood up i stood up straight and went <laughs> fuck <laughs> anyways valerie yeah so Hi. it's yeah it's been uh over a year since we interviewed you last right i think it was even before the jack four stuff um let's start with the fluffy stuff we're sitting here with the gpi award for best live stream and the two of you won it how does that how does that feel for both of you actually um i I was very excited that, that we won. Um, I, I think we put in a lot of work into this show to make it what it is. And, you know, we, we're doing five days a week. We're doing so many hours. Um, we've had all these special shows we've done. And uh, it means a lot to us. It's kind of just, uh, it's not why we do it, but it's a nice reward from the community to just say, hey, you guys are doing great. We love your show. And so recognition is always cool. Um, I, I, I don't think recognition is is like the main reason why we're doing anything we're doing. Like we just love having the best show. We just love, you know, putting the time in and, you know, and seeing the results. But it's it's really cool when you when you, you know, in front of all of your peers in the Poker Go studio. It's it, w it was definitely a cool experience. Yeah. So that being said, you had a camera crew following you guys around during the Global Poker Awards, yeah. and that camera crew was finishing up filming or no and it was it was starting filming uh for the million dollar cash game and so you guys actually have a movie coming out documentary a documentary uh around the million dollar cash game and hustler casino live and a lot of it is around you can you give us an update as to when that's coming out and the progress on that show or in that movie nick knows more than i do because he's nick's been in there grinding and, yeah. and working on it yeah so we we uh are working with believe lt they're a great production company and we work directly with a guy named patrick it was supposed to be out towards right now like it was supposed to be coming out right now but a few weeks back i don't know maybe three four weeks back we got our first kind of real viewing you know they they went to ryan and they came to me and um and again they're very good what happened was the guy that's in charge of that knows poker that like is on the same page with us he kind of got overrun by an editor and a partner and they went in a little bit of a direction that when i was watching it like this the preview i stopped halfway and i said no like there's so many good pieces here but like it was going in a direction that didn't make sense and the documentary like the million dollar game did not start when ryan and i said let's do a million dollar game the million dollar game and the story started when ryan and i met and and then eventually said let's get it let's let's go get a show we'll get, let's do this right that's when the million dollar game started and that's where it needs to start mm -hmm. and it needed more context on the way up and um so 
I delayed it because I don't care. And same with Ryan. I don't care. Like, do I want Netflix to pick it up? Yes, I do. Do I want it to be a huge hit? Yes, I do. But what I want more than anything is to know when people watch it that it's fucking awesome. And I didn't feel it was yet. So yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree. And I agreed with Nick. We're on the same page with that. There was definitely something missing and something that needed to be added to it. And so um, we kind of just went back to the drawing board. And, uh, yeah. you know, Nick's been working with Patrick and and their production crew to just fine tune it and make it yeah. uh, uh, a better product once it comes out. And it needed some narration uh, yeah. and some context. And so that's all going to be there now. It's yeah, gonna Nick's going to do better. some voiceovers for it and kind of just when we go to a certain subject and they're talking about Jack Four, you know, we needed someone and that's going to be Nick to say, you know, well, on September you know, yeah. 29th or, you know, this it, is it, what happened and blah, blah, blah. And just so that the audience knows, because the most of the audience is going to be watching that thing. Um, they don't know all of the details about our show and, and what has happened, right? They might be a general poker fan. They might be not even a poker fan that just happens to stumble upon it. And so they need some narration to know what's going on. Yeah. And it was kind of glossed over. And I'm like, if I'm watching this and was I don't too know. too fluffy? It was too focused on the, mil the million dollar game itself. Meaning like there was interviews with some of the players. They're great. We should still show those. Uh, we showed a lot of back behind the scenes running around, you know, different things. They didn't have the context and the meat to like a story. A, a story, a documentary has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, but it has to have like the context of the fight and the battle to get to the million dollar game. That wasn't in there. And Patrick knew it. He really in his heart knew it and he knew that that's what my feedback was going to be. But like I said, there was kind of a board of people and one director who since has been let go, I think, or, or moved somewhere else. And that's where him and I, like I said, I said, just stop. And I'm like, I, my blood, like my ears were like ringing because I was like, oh my God, this isn't it. And he knew it. He just wanted to show it to me organically. And he's like, and to his credit, he's like, you're right. And I've been like battling over this and you're right. I said we need to start over we have all the footage we just need to put it together in the context and that's when i said to him i said patrick the million dollar game started with ryan and i said let's get a show that's when it started and then to endure uh jack four and all the other hatchets and to eventually put ourselves in a position to win this award i said that story needs to be in there who gives two fucks about just the million dollar game the million dollar game is just a crescendo of all of it so so speaking of the million dollar cash game there's um it's all online it's all on youtube if anyone wants to go back and watch i think the last day was the craziest and the best we set a bunch of records at the million dollar cash game too and i'm just curious are there plans to make this an annual event yeah i think we want to um so we haven't really discussed yet the date or anything like that but uh, i was thinking may would be just a good time to do it every year right before the world series of poker yeah um, I, I don't think we're going to do, you know, four days again, because w I think if we plan more of like one day, two day, maybe three days, if we really need to, I think two's the sweet spot. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> two for sure. Um, is, is, is ideal because then we can put together the best lineups possible. Um, as opposed to just like, all right, scrambling to make sure we have a game. Like we kind of did. Uh, somewhat at the end of uh, like the last day of, of last year like we had to cancel that we we're gonna do five days We had to cancel one of them and then the last day we had to scramble a little bit to get the lineup together the way we wanted it And it ended up being great. Obviously that was the the day when when Tom won the three million dollar pot um, but It I think it's better if we have two days where everybody's begging to get in and we have to say no to people as opposed to just like making extra days just to fit everybody in and then the games end up not being as good so um yeah i think that we'll probably end up doing two days we'll probably do it in may we'll probably try to do it every year um so definitely look out for that you know valerie if we're still friends in may maybe you want to host it again <laughs> i'll consider i'll think about yeah. it my schedule's pretty full yeah. doing a lot of other hosting gigs so yes. maybe so live yes. with the bike will call <laughs> i don't know but uh <laughs> well who is this nick this is uh um this is Whiskey Cat. She was like a rescue that. Oh, I saw that you got it. Yeah, I got a, the black cat too. So, have you ever heard of guys that do the whole save a hoe thing? No. That's no. Yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> All right. And that's Nick. She was found on the street. She was about four or five <laughs> weeks old. That's cool. The poor thing was feral. She save was scared. <laughs> she was scared to death. She wouldn't eat. 
So I wound up bottle feeding her, and then like I never liked cool. cats. I never even knew, even touched a cat. And now I'm her mom, and we're mom. really tight. Yeah, yeah and yeah. so I owe her a life. This is Whiskey Cat. That's cool then, that she just jumps up here when you guys yeah. are recording. And then I'm shocked Salem, the black cat, isn't here. And so because sometimes oh. I'm not here, <laughs> yeah, I'm not here all the time, hey. I wanted to get her a companion. So I went to look at a rescue of a litter. Now he, Salem, was raised like bottle fed from a baby he doesn't have any hang-ups or issues like like whiskey and valerie and <laughs> and so he's totally different but the reason i got him is because they said that uh black cats are euthanized more because of the superstition yeah so yeah. i took him that's cool yeah so salem and whiskey so you have a new co-host here that's cool. yeah I, I love these cats man how yeah. are they getting along with the turtles and the pigs and the frogs and well they're, are they're they live here Oh yeah, okay. so yeah, so <laughs> they just have to. Well, do, they just or have tortoise, to. Do, yeah, tortoise. they they're good. Tortoise, they take they yeah. take tortoise rides. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's good. Hey, um, I, uh, yeah, you could you could make some money on OnlyFans, but yeah, <laughs> but you know, n not everyone knows this. Back to the point, we were we were starting the beginning of our breakup on the last million dollar game. We weren't even talking hardly in during the million dollar game. You and me. Yeah. Were you and Ryan fighting no, too? No, you and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, to my point about oh, you hosting. I'm so I felt so bad because Ryan has a million and one things going on trying to run the million dollar cash game. And I'm like, Nick and I aren't getting along. You told and him? And I fucking hate him. And like, yeah, I, I think he was asking how I was doing. I'm oh. like, we're not getting along. We're fighting. Well, on the day of the million dollar game? But he, huh? He's so on the day of the game, you mean? Yeah, during the game. And he's like, oh, uh, I can't uh, talk. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't so, even know if you heard he's me. He's so solid. I think I remember this, yeah. <laughs> he's but so I, solid. He didn't even mention it. No, but he, he didn't mention it because he was in the middle of directing and doing doing stuff I and never running knew. around and i was like i'm upset <laughs> i never knew that you went to him and said that's, that's i didn't like go to no, him but, but like he was like it. he was like hey how are you doing and i was just like well nick and i are fighting he's like oh uh, yeah and then he just kept going because he's like i don't have time for this i don't <laughs> I, like vaguely remember this <laughs> yeah and then we yeah. broke up shortly after and now she'll be hosting again so but you know God, i want to bring up just the one thing that made you so mad can i you no, don't I don't care. Shit, right? I, I thought it was about Ryan, but we we can we can talk about the oh, cats. Oh no, go ahead. We can talk ahead. about me. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, uh, I want to hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. All right. So, and I really, I'll tell the I, full story if you start saying some bullshit. Well, we don't want it. Well, it's not going to be bullshit. It's just going to be two different perceptions <laughs> okay. of one incident. Um, and I am not. Believe it or not, I am not cocky when I said it. Like in general, people think I am, but I'm really not cocky. And so this came across this way, but I thought we were close enough and I thought you'd take it as I did it. But like, I was so, I fucking hated her guts at that point, you know, start, because we were fighting, right? But, but I was literally so happy for her because she's good at it. And, and she was like sucking it up because it was like so cool for her because she likes that kind of stuff. And again, she's good at it. There's no favors done here. You should be doing that kind of stuff. He's backpedaling. I am backpedaling because I, you might think that I meant that. And so she was just getting ready to do a piece. The lights were on. Fucking lips were as bright red as they could be. And she was ready to go. And she looked at me and I go, you're welcome. And no, I didn't say it like that. I go, he didn't you're say welcome. Like that. It was in the VIP area. And uh, it was my first interview that came up on the screen. And I was like, so like overwhelmed because the, the show's so big. Yeah. Everyone's watching like 40, 50,000 people. <laughs> he looks at me. He's like, you're welcome. I didn't say <laughs> it like that. You're welcome. I did not say it like that. And he was just, okay. so he was I like, am, I'm listen, helping your career. So I underplay it and say, you're welcome. And she goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it was somewhere that's, in the middle, and funny. I didn't mean it the way she took it, but I found out weeks, weeks that. later yeah. that, like, she just was so mad at me. So anyways, let's get back so, to Ryan. So, yeah, let's get back to Ryan Before because you give I'm, a rebuttal. I, I want to I do a little fluffy stuff, and then I want to get into the, like, more tougher stuff that we I want to talk to you about. But, like... What I, I know at, in, during the million dollar cash game, that was big. That broke all kinds of records. Biggest pot on TV history. I think uh, like the, I don't think we've ever had a million dollar buy in on TV. Uh, we've had a million dollars on the table. Remember on Live with the Bike, you want to do the million dollar game. Yeah. <laughs> but like it's crazy now they did a million dollar buy in. But what have been some of your like highs and lows over the past? It's been two years now, right? Mm, two and a half. Two and a half almost, years. Yeah. What what do you remember? Like, what do you what do you love about the show? What what were the one of the best moments? And like, what was like the worst thing that happened? Um, let's see. Well, the worst thing is probably just the Jack Four because that that was just such a stressful time and 
that day and then the time after that, but especially that day. So, I, you know, and just we can get into as that soon as I later, asked, I was like, oh, obviously, Jack yeah, Ford. We <laughs> can talk about more of that probably later. I assume, yeah. We will. Like, we will. But just like, you know, um, just dealing with everything and between Garrett and, and the Robbie stuff and just the pressure and the. Um, right. Uh, Brian, uh, Ryan, the mic, though, when you you have to keep it. Oh, I see. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though you're. It's like you don't own a live stream we usually have Laos, poker show. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you have Rabas, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just the whole stress of that day, prob- off the top of my head, that's probably the worst. Um, but the best moments, I mean, there's so many, right? Um, number one, just the first show we ever had. Um, I remember like how happy and, ex- as ex- and excited I was like that day. I remember I, uh, I like... I just wanted to like remember that day a lot because I was looking forward to it so much, you know. Um, and the first show, yeah. And I remember I was before the show, like a few hours before, I was at the gym, and I was like in the parking garage there in my car, and I just like recorded a video of myself just like thanking everyone and talking because I just and I ended up posting some of it on social media, I think. But I, I ended up I just wanted to like record myself like thanking everyone and like just remembering that moment, you know. And then I remember uh, I was. I was like sitting there in my car thinking about it and I just like started crying because I was just like thinking about like how long road. Yeah. Just all the ups and downs and how, you know, like sometimes, you know, in life you have a dream, right? Like you have a vision, you have something you want, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Like it doesn't matter how good you are at something or how much you put into it or money or anything like it. Most things for most people, like they don't happen. Right. Or at least they don't happen the way that you envision them and want them. Right. Right. And, you know, me and Nick have been discussing uh, our own show for, for years and we had been putting it together for a long time. We had been going to other casinos and meeting with them. Um, and then, you know, when Sean contacted us, we were like, this is it. But even then, you know, I, I don't get me personally the way I am. I don't get too high in those moments because it's like, uh, you know, I'll believe it when I see it, you know, like, I don't want to get too excited and then get let down. So, um, you know, okay, we, we talked. This seems good. I'm excited. We did it, right? Okay, but we didn't sign the contract yet, right? We're getting ready. We're planning it. Then we signed the contract. Okay, I think this is real, right? Then it takes another year before we get everything, you know, ready. You know, who knows? Maybe there's going to be some, Building the stage. Yeah, maybe there's going to be some other issue that comes up because it kept getting delayed too, you know? Maybe some other issue comes up and, you know, our dream gets crushed. Who knows? It's possible. That's life, right? So, you know, when finally we get there and I'm like, all right, this is actually happening. Like, this is it. Like (laughs) our show is on the air today. That's when like I got emotional and I was like, oh man, like this is so, you know, uh, there's so many great moments, but still that was probably like the number one memorable moment for me was just the first game. Do you still get emotional with some games? Just like, uh, not really. I mean, uh, because it's just like, I don't know. I mean. Maybe a little bit, but it's just like we're so used to it at this point. It's just, uh, it's just our thing. Like it's, you we've know, had one or two hug it out moments. No, no, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. we do. Oh, yeah. when, when the, the, the first day of the million dollar game, we, we did, and yeah. we we hugged it out. And we were like, we did it, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. For me, it's like maybe part of it is like I think it's, you know, I'm an emotional person, and I, I think it's cool. Uh, and, like Nick's not like that a lot of the time, right? Like Nick's like a, I don't know, Nick comes across I sometimes. Like this it's like, is opposite uh, day. He's very emotional. You no, don't no, see no, no, like no. I don't mean emotional like, no, I mean emotional like getting like crying type emotional type thing. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm saying, I think Nick is comes across more of like a, you know, an alpha whatever guy, right? So when Nick gets all like happy and excited and emotional and like wants to hug it out and, you know, he's like, I feel like he's like proud of us and all that, like, that to me is cool. Like that's when I know it's like I a don't special show moment. it, even though it's yeah. there. Is what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like yeah, yeah. Like you know, yeah. It's just... I mean, I even think we told each other we loved each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a big emotional baby. <clears throat> yeah, in the guy. inside he is. Yeah, for sure. yeah. In but, the inside. But uh, I'm just saying, like when he, you know, like the million dollar game, he comes and he's like man, we did it. Like, you know, we hug it out. Like that to me is a special moment. Yeah, you know? for sure. The the awards, you know, when yeah, we won same. the award, say, that was big too. Um, uh, with, when the $3 million pot ha- happened, I called him, I went downstairs, I got my phone. Um, I called him, I said, Nick, we just broke the record $3.1 million pot. And that was like really 
cool just on the phone just like yeah. a moment there yeah, where he's like cool. holy shit we did it yeah. you know like that's there's nothing we can do to control how big a pot is or what hands are come out other than just put the lineups together and put the games together and just hope right and so those first few days there weren't that many massive pots and then the, we're hoping that we can just have this moment that you know lives in in poker history and and we have that that three million dollar pot so that was like a cool moment for us when we hit fifty eight thousand live viewers yeah. was pretty cool yeah all the, you guys better win the award for hand of the year for that three million dollar pot yeah i just saw the um the awards just came out with their like mm -hmm. uh preliminary nominations yeah. and i went through it um i had to tell eric actually the the guy that, that runs it um to add, he didn't have that hand on the list oh my god <laughs> so i had to tell him to add what it so hell? now it's on there but but yeah, I mean, I don't know what, there's a lot of great hands this year, our show and other shows. So I don't know what will actually win. I, I think because it's so much money, it should win. It's yeah. a $3 million <clears throat> pot, right? It's a world record. But I think there's like other categories they should have. It also was a great hand to watch. It wasn't just yeah. the size of the oh, pot. Oh, the drama. There's yeah, Wesley, yeah. like the, the sweating. And then we didn't know Tom's hand until the, uh, yeah, it was big. Yeah. Um, and it was a bluff. Of, it's not like just some aces versus kings cooler, right? Right. Um, I told Eric, by the way, um, the Eric Dennis, who runs the Global Poker Awards, you know, I said, look, um, we're like, we're probably going to win stream of the year, right? Like w we run the most, we get the most views, right? Like, so most likely there's other great streams, but most likely we're going to end up winning it. But I, I don't think <clears throat> that should be the category, or I think there should be another category. At least I said, mm -hmm. I think there should be a category for best live stream event of the year. And I think that would be more competitive and more fun for the fans. So if you had like our million dollar game, right? Um, and then maybe you have our 24 hour game also. You have- um, The WPT the, game Yeah, exactly. Or something, um, yeah. You know, Garrett returning to Bally's. Um, yeah. The Lodge is like relaunch week they did with all those big games. Um, uh, I forget what that way it lets was. other people there compete. was a big hand between Antonius and uh, yeah and oh, uh, oh that was the other thing I said I said yeah. poker goes um, clash of the Titans I think it was right. called right so if, if you had those in a category that would be fun and competitive and fair <clears throat> but I don't think it's as fair well let's not take out the other no, one no, let's I, just add it I love that's what he's saying, <laughs> oh, that's what he is? saying. Okay. but either one I'm, I just told him like I, I said let's add it but I'm just saying I don't think it's fair to only have this for live streams because it's it it's not as competitive as and as fun as the other category would be but he's like I can't this year maybe next year yeah um, cool but anyway that was just a side note so you guys uh, just recently re-signed with the Hustler Casino can you talk to me about that sure well Nick uh, but Nick will talk about it but I, I will say that you know Nick put in a ton of work um, into that to get it done and uh, I mean I'll say this so if if I wasn't partners with Nick um, we, we might not even be running a profitable business <laughs> we wouldn't be making the money we're making we wouldn't be making the business deals we're making um, the show would be a shell of, of what it is because Nick is doing all this stuff behind the scenes that like I don't want to do or I'm not capable of doing and he's negotiating with the, the casino. It's been since the summer, right? Since like June or something. We were up in August because August 3rd, yeah. 2021 was our first show. So August was when we, or no, June is when we signed it or yeah. But I think August, August technically. Start, technically yeah. because we started But August you were 3rd. negotiating <clears throat> since June, right? Yes. So. That's seven months. Yeah. It's and, crazy. And I handled that alone usually too because Ryan doesn't want to be part of it and Ryan would just sign just so he could go start, <laughs> yeah. just so he could go do I'll the next I'll just say yes episode. to whatever they offer. Just right. like $10 yeah. an hour, yeah. that's yeah. what and you're I getting? And I can't, like we can't risk that vibe, right? So, um, but it was, look, I'm going to say this. I don't want to be Terrell Owens, okay? So I'm going to be careful with this answer. And this, even though we're not careful anymore on our show, I have to oh, be careful Oh, that's my quarterback. This. What? Is that what you're saying? No, Terrell Owens always talked bad against his teams. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me I'm your quarterback. He was hot. I no, matched. He's not a Terrell no, Owens is a receiver. The quote that I thought of I when you said Terrell him Owens on is Terrell <laughs> Owens started like crying and saying, when he was talking about Jeff Garcia, he's like, that's my quarterback. No, no, no. That's what I was thinking no, of. No, Terrell Owens is usually like putting his foot in his mouth and getting trained. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's he's, fair. He's hot. Uh, so, but when I was single, I have a boyfriend. I oh matched with Terrell Did Owens on Bumble. <laughs> no, I just want to let you guys know. I yeah. met him once, actually. He was in Santa Clara for a little bit. He looks bit. really good with his shirt off. We got it. I we know. We can talk I, all day about T.O. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. Finish I your T.O. <laughs> because he's a rebel. I love him. But anyways, okay, I'll put it to you this way. You could read between the lines. It took until a few weeks ago to get that deal signed. I thought that I was going to walk into the corporate office in a meeting 
and like they were going to carry me out on their shoulders because what we've accomplished for ourselves right. for them yeah. right didn't happen and uh i, I had we i respectfully had to grind until just recently from june um or august excuse me uh to get this deal done it's a good deal um it's a good deal let me tell you this anyone doing streaming would love this deal but we probably per year there's about a three million dollar bill put back into hustler and people around the world know hustler now and that wasn't the case before and um so Anyways, I'm not going to get into the details. It's a very good deal. It was hard to get there. And Why? Why there was, was it hard? Did they did they want to shortchange you or what? Well, you got to know that I can't answer all your direct questions because I told you I'm not going to be Terrell Owens. Let's just say Nick's a Nick is a good negotiator. He's a good business guy. He's experienced in this. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's not afraid to go back and forth to fight for what he thinks is right. And well, it's not like they could do this on their own. They needed you guys. Yeah, but there's leverage both People ways. People say I don't bluff yeah. a lot. Yeah. I had to do some bluffing. Triple barrels? I, at one point, I walked out and said, Look, we're done. In any negotiation where you both didn't sides... You did you? I did yeah. catch oh, okay. that. Where both sides bring a lot to the table, there's leverage in, on both sides. And, yeah. And, you know, I, I'm just not willing to, to do all that. Um, and, and, and Nick's good at that. And so that's just one example of, like, things where... I literally didn't have to worry about it. I was never there. I was never involved. I didn't. It was just like, oh, Nick, how's it going? Like, that's yeah. as much as I got involved was like, oh, how are we looking? You know, I have no clue how it actually went because I wasn't there. But like at the end, Nick's like, we got it done. I'm like, OK, great. That's yeah. Can awesome. you imagine the other uh, the other way it could have turned out? The, yeah. the lights get shut down. <laughs> yeah. Bunch of guys in yeah. suits come and take all your yeah. equipment halfway through the stream. I didn't get it done, bro. Well, Sorry. you know what's funny <laughs> is you may you, you say that in jest, but that I was worried more for Ryan than anything when I was negotiating because I thought, God, if if I push too far and this kid doesn't get to keep doing what we're doing. Oh, he would die. Yeah, and I love it too. So, But I, here, here's the thing why it's it's okay why I'm not, I, I would never be mm -hmm. too worried. Obviously, I want to be at Hustler. Like we, Me too. Like our, we're like the management there. Like we're, the it's best. great. It's great. But I think what we've built at this point with high stakes poker productions, um, hopefully, is that we have uh, such a good reputation. We could and go what wherever. we've built is that if, you know, but but we're not like hustler yeah. casino live is that's where we want to be and that's where we're going to be the most successful and uh it's just we, we couldn't have found a a better match like it's crazy that we talked to every la casino when we first uh were pitching the show and that was the last place we went and we just didn't think of them at first and then when sean came to us we're like oh my they God, weren't on the map this is, this is perfect <clears throat> we're like this is perfect like the, they actually get it like nobody else gets it as much as because there's different levels of management and so he's a gm and then there's corporate and 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 we could not we could not be i've said this a million times we could not be as successful as we are without uh the the management on the floor like sean and those guys they give us the ability yeah to be who we are to give us what we need to do it and they do see the what it's done for the casino so let's let's kind of leave it at that but i will say there was one point where like my morale was down it was down. It was literally down. I didn't share it with him a lot because I just wanted yeah, to handle it. And um, and at one point, I didn't lose my cool, but I just said, okay, we're done. Okay. We'll, I'll, I, I think the commerce will want to stream. No bullshit. And... After everything, after no, you being 86 it, from commerce, uh, you're still going to go to commerce. They would let me back in for that. <laughs> so, but, but to their credit, so let me, let me say both sides to their credit, we both need each other and, and, and we need them. And, and I do want to be there and we will always be there. We have a three year extension and, uh, and, um, it worked out and I think they had a lot of fair points. We had a lot of fair points. We got to a point where it's a very lucrative and fair three-year deal. And uh, we're happy to be there. Really am. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. That's so, just a little it back of the inside story. Okay, so we, we got a three-year extension for mm -hmm. Hustler Casino Live. Now, are you ready for the next three years, Ryan? Or mm -hmm. And like, what do you see? Uh, how do you see the show expanding or changing in the next three years? Yeah, so I, I'm definitely excited. Um, I, I'll say that in the last few months like since the million dollar game like me and nick have talked about this um at times it's felt a little stagnant that like we're just doing it we're just it's like the same shows over and over 
And while we could just keep doing that forever and get, you know, whatever, 5,000 viewers or 7,000 viewers or whatever every show, which is still great and still more than any other show that runs semi-consistently, um, it's not enough and it's not exciting enough. And um, that's like how I am. I get bored, you know? I want a challenge. I want to do something exciting. But you've right? got Ray J coming. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Nick's excited about Ray J. I love Ray J. I do too, yeah. <laughs> He was Nick's, on Love and Hip Hop. Sexy they had to tell me who Mr. B song. They had to tell me who Mr. Beast was when he was coming. Oh dear God. Yeah, that was the night I met you and we went and played with Mr. Beast and you're like, who the fuck's Mr. Beast? Yeah, we played literally a <laughs> We literally played five ten with Mr. Beast the, with you. You said that was the first time you guys you and Nick met? No, no, that was That was. No, that was in she, person. Yeah, really? she came there to visit. After doing oh, the grand opening the of right? Live at the yeah. Bike. We oh, came and right. had something wow. to eat. I gave her and a hat. And then after, he's like, hey, can you be on yeah, my can you be my crazy. co-host? But the, you just come up to us. We're eating. I'm like, hey, you like, do you want to play? I go, you're you like, do you want to play? this guy, Mr. Beast? Whoever no, you he didn't is. even tell me he was Mr. Beast. You're like, do you want to play 510? Let's just go play. I'm like, okay. And then it's like, wait, is that fucking Mr. Beast? Oh, didn't you know he was playing that day? I did I like didn't know what was going on because oh. I was doing live with the bike okay. and I just can't he said and that I really don't know who he was so it wasn't like so I was he hyping didn't tell it up. me yeah, anything yeah. that's funny <laughs> and so I'm just like randomly playing 510 with Mr. Beast before he, the show even yeah, starts I told so my funny. kids yeah some guy named Mr. Beast they're like what <laughs> oh my god what I'm like really you know? that was such a fun night <laughs> that was fun so let's uh, yeah go ahead oh sorry no I was gonna say so so yeah because like that's just how I am where uh, I want to always make it exciting. Like I want to be excited to work, you know, and I don't want to just do the same thing over and over again. So we talked about this, how, you know, that motivates us to come up with new ideas and we're two and a half years in now. And, you know, we have it at the very least uh, two and a half, three more years. Right. So yeah. we, we want to come up with some new ideas and expand the show and make it better. And so we've talked about a few things. We have some ideas that I think this year we're going to, you know, change our show a little bit. And, um, in what way? I mean, there, there's all different things, right? There's, there's some ideas we came up with, with just some big ideas for shows. Um, there's another idea we came up with in, that would, I don't want to say exactly what it is, but just in terms of like, uh, changing or expanding what our product is. Um, beyond just Hustler Casino Live, but a bunch of things around it. Um, so that's something we've talked about. Um, there's some production elements that we'd like to do, but, you know, that could involve, you know, uh, spending money, which is, you know, something we have to always discuss and say, like, okay, well, this is the cost and this is the reward. Like, is it worth it type things? And so there's some things there in all of those categories that we really want to, to, to do this year because we don't want this year to just be the same thing as it was in the past. We, you know, we, we don't want to just be, all right, Andy game Tuesday, that same crew, you know, all right, Thursday, 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 same crew. All right. We're going to do some 5,100 game on Friday. You know, we want exciting shows. We want exciting elements. We want to add things. We want people to look at it, you know, in late 2024 and be like, wow, the show looks way different. Now this product is way different and way better than it was two years ago. Yeah. And a couple of things on that is you got to be careful. And we will be that we don't change something to where we lose the formula, lose the look we have and everything. So that you got to be very careful when you do stuff like that. And you gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta go slow and make sure that it's, it's not going to take away from what's, what's working. Um, the other thing that's happened in the poker community, the people that watch the chat pros and, and such is they've been desensitized. And so now we run a Friday game that's 200, 400 that's blasting off. But if it's not blasting off, like, like when we have one that like goes crazy, they're desensitized. Like yeah. our Tuesday game this last Tuesday was it not insane? Oh, uh, the two anti game. Ago. Yeah, the, two the anti game. Yeah, two yeah. yeah, it was it was insane, yeah. and I don't think people realized to to do that five days a week. Yeah. all through the year, how hard it is. But like, if we have an average Thursday game, everyone's like, "Well, eh, I don't know." Yeah, I mean, you know? We, <laughs> we committed to five days when we started this, and when we commit to something, we stick to it. Yeah, and excuse me, if we did, like, let's say we decided at the beginning we're doing three days, mm -hmm. right, or even four. And then like each of the games would be better in theory. Right. And so then, you know, people would be more excited every show, but we're doing five days and, you know, we're not just doing it because we're, we're saying we're going to put together five amazing games a week, five games with 500 K pots a week. We're, we're also mainly the, the primary reason is for the players, right? Like we want to provide a 
private game, so to speak, for the players that want to play. And, um, you know, we will then try to make that game as exciting as possible and try to, you know, get as many views as we can and have highlights and all of that. But, you know, if we didn't have the players, we wouldn't be able to do the five days a week. But, you know, when, when Billy's able to get guys like, you know, whoever, Dr. P, Dr. H, Tyler Dickinson, uh, uh, you know, Mia Meatball, you know, Nate Hill, like these people are down to play once or twice a week. And so if they want to play him and, and that's a, it's like a fun, soft, juicy game. Like we're going to put it on the air, but maybe it's not going to be, you know, exciting enough to get 10,000 views, but, um, it's, it's still a, a good game. And that's like Tuesdays, right? Like every Tuesday is a fun game. And I think anybody who plays whatever you call those stakes, mid stakes, it's probably high stakes, you know, at this point, right? Yeah, of course. Um, like, like every, pro player or half decent player in LA would absolutely beg to play in that game. Right? Like if they thought they had a chance, they would do anything to play in that game. Right. But they, they know they can't. And you look at those lineups and it's, it's Nick, it's Chris, J books, JT, you know, uh, big John, Santa, Ronnie, you know, whoever else, right. On a given week. And everybody wants to play in that game. That is, arguably the best 25 50 50 100 game in the country on a given tuesday um but people take that for granted and they, they don't realize what they're watching right and then we just get you know four thousand five thousand people watching um each week um because people are like well i've seen this before you know and and you're not going to see anything too crazy too new but those four or five thousand people they watch it because it's a soap opera right like you watch the week before with Jay yeah. Bogues and Nick and Chris, what's going to happen this week with them, right? Like, I, I that's how I, I equate it to like Days of Our Lives, you know? Oh mm -hmm. yeah, oh I'm quite aware. The, yeah. the Berkey Nick thing is very Days of Our Lives too. Yeah, very <laughs> dramatic. So, I just want to talk about something I've noticed about you, and I'm just curious your thoughts on it. Like, I uh, like this one gets caught up in all the little things that are being said on Twitter, like every little space. He wants to talk about everything that everyone says, but I noticed <laughs> really? you. I, I didn't notice it. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. But I noticed you and like, I got a chance to work with you during the million dollar cash game. And by the way, I love working with you. You're like, you're not a micromanager. You're like, okay, you can do this. You're good at this. Go do it. You know, <laughs> like you didn't tell me what to do. You just kind of helped me get to what I was good at during that show. And I loved it. Um, but one thing I noticed about you is like, people talk so much shit online. People talk so much shit about hustler and everything. And I see you sometimes responding to people, but mostly I find you just like extremely focused on your goal that you, no matter what, you're just so mm. relentless. And I think that's part of the reason why you might be successful. I'm just like wondering why things don't get to you and why you're just like so focused and able to achieve so much, mm. even with all of this public uh, outcry sometimes against Hustler. So I think maybe at the beginning um, of our show, it probably got to me more um, because I felt the pressure and the stress of like wanting to reach our goals and wanting to be the best. But I think once we got there, once we hit a couple of those goals, you know, the Mr. Beast game, the, the Phil Ivey games, the um, once we knew clearly, like we are the number one show, we're the best, like no one can take us down. And then I, I would say, especially after the Jack four, so the, the Jack four, um, you know, that was obviously stressful. And a lot of the stuff people said then did get to me and I was responding to people. Right. Especially like just stuff that was blatant, uh, uh, like blatant lies and mm -hmm. just like, you know, just people stated things at facts that just weren't true, right? Those things do hurt me and affect me. Like if they're about me, about Nick, about anyone involved in our show, like I, I hate that and I want to correct them and I want to prove to them that they're wrong. Um, but once we got through the Jack four, right? And you know, I, I think that was a key moment where, where we realized that we're going to be fine no matter what, nothing can take us down. We are the best show. We're confident in what we're doing. And we got through this, so like we're good, and we're we're getting so many views still. Um, our players are still there, and so I think that built a lot of confidence. Where um, after that, uh, for me at least, like anything that people were saying, 
um, for the most part, like it just didn't affect me because of it's, it's a confidence thing, right? Like I was confident that we were fine no matter what, and that we're the best show. And that like, no matter what, um, people say about us, um, it doesn't affect us. Like it's not going to affect our show. It's not going to affect the, our players playing on the show. It's not going to affect the viewers watching our show. Um, it's not going to affect our business being successful, us making money, any of that. Like now, sure, like if we go out and say something that's really bad that could like cancel us or something, like sure, but that's like so unlikely and hard to do. He's already right. done like, all Nick's that. Tested, it's fine. Nick's tested that. Yeah, right? I know. It's, I know where the line Nick is. Nick has tested the <laughs> no, cancelability. <you> no, <laughs> no, I don't know about that. But he's tested it, and like you know, no one. It's like he's wearing a bulletproof vest, and people are shooting at him, and it's just like keep shooting me, like nothing's gonna happen. You know? There's there's uh, a rhyme and reason for some yeah, of it. Yeah, for yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And but what I'm saying is that like, so for your question. Um, no matter what, that's why I don't really get caught up in all that stuff because I know that no matter what, it's not going to affect us. We're going to be successful. And the only thing that matters to me really is like, does whatever I'm about to do, uh, help our business or not. Right. And if it doesn't, then why do it? Right. And if it does, it's like, we're going to make more money. We're going to be more successful. We're going to get more views of this and that. We're going to get better games. If I go and respond to this person on Twitter then, then yeah, I'll do it. But if not, then what's the point? It's just a waste of time. Right. And so, um, yeah. And so me and Nick have talked about that a few times a little bit and I'm just like, dude, like, it's like, it's just don't let this shit stress you out. Like, it's just, if it's fun, go ahead. But like, yeah, it's just oh, he's going to, he's going to die but, of a heart attack on spaces but, one day. But, but it's like, it's not, I'm not stressed out about anything. Yeah. It's not <laughs> worth fighting with random people that have 16 followers. Um, that and calling them names or calling them like a shithead or something if it's not going to help our business it's, no it's dickhead oh sorry dickhead my bad, my bad, my bad. i apologize so, so. That, that's just my viewpoint but i'm um, i also respect nick so much that like i'm okay with his viewpoint and if i'm ever not then he knows that i'll just like call him and be like hey you know i think we shouldn't do this you know and then he'll be like okay like you know if you feel that way like i won't you know because we respect each other um, but 90% of the time we both let each other do our thing. And for me personally, like my viewpoint, all that stuff is like, I don't, I typically only respond to the random people if it's, um, well, I guess two things. One, if it's somebody with like a big following who, you know, people are going to like see what they say and like, I need to respond because if I don't, you know, it looks bad because people are viewing it, but that's rare. The, the second one where it's more randoms that are responding I will respond only if it's something that is clearly factually wrong and I want to correct them. That's all. Um, I, I don't want to get into like an insulting person or get into an argument or this or that or whatever. Um, like, you know, I don't know, like some, actually I don't know if we're getting examples, but there's just, just, yeah, if someone says something that is offensive and it's clearly factually wrong and I don't want that out there or I don't want someone thinking that, then I'll correct it. If not, I just ignore the negative comments because it doesn't affect us. So, uh, let's go a little heavier into the Jack four stuff. Your children are out of control. I just want to let you know. I know. Well, one of them is. Yeah. Oh, that's what the, oh, the cats oh, they, oh they're God. about to pull the power cords out. So I love this. The Jack four stuff, looking back at it all, would you do anything different? Oh, sure. I'm sure there's there's a bunch of things we would do different. Um, oh, my God. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, this is funny. Um, I, you know, I got one comment. You know, you shouldn't have cats. You need to be professional. I'm like, no. no. I didn't say that. No, in the comment section yeah, of yeah, the show. Yeah. I'm like, no, I want to do it like this. It's my uh, life. It's my life. <laughs> If you, if you put the tortoise up here, that, then we got a, a He's too a big. Problem. We've He's already had chickens, tortoises, oh, dogs. Yeah. yeah, Francisco's chicken. Yeah, we had a Chloe cam. Um, Man, let's see. What would we do different? Um, I have to like go back and just walk it through in my head and think about it. Um, and would you have, because I wasn't there, would you have pulled Robbie and Garrett out and did do yeah. that? Because I don't think that was right. optimal. So, so I'd say the number one thing is like just getting flustered in that moment. That moment was like so awkward like Garrett asking me to go down there and, and talk to him and stuff. Um, I would say, I don't know. Um, but what I will say is that one thing I definitely would have done different is I would not have let uh, her give the money back to Garrett. I would not have let that happen. Like I would have said, listen, like when I tried to walk away, by the way, in the moment I said, 
guys, I'm walking away. Like I cannot be involved in this. I don't even want to hear about this. Like I'm walking away and I started walking away and they followed me behind me and then I saw it happen. But what I would have said in hindsight probably is guys, uh, Garrett, you can't do this. Like that is not happening here. Like I don't care what you do in the, your own privacy, but like in the casino, like that is not happening. Like if you want to leave, go home, that's fine. But there are no like transactions with chips happening in this casino. And I probably, I mean, I, it was such an awkward thing for me to even be in the huddle of like to be involved in, like, I didn't want to be in that conversation. Um, but I, I, I wish that that part never happened because that was probably the part that I wish the most never happened. Do you think it could have just been handled like the next day? Yeah. Just be like, go else? home. Let's sleep on it. Let's think about it. Let's go watch the video, whatever. And let's talk about it tomorrow. You know, like let's not overreact right now. Like we're on the air. I got to go direct. Like just let's not overreact. Let's sleep on it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Like I promise nothing's going to change. Do you think that the poker community handled it fairly? Like, like Joey, Berkey, you know, like they, there were a lot of eyes on it. Charlie Carroll had like oh, of a... Of course not. Of course a, they, didn't, they didn't handle it fairly. Like people jumped to conclusions. People overreacted. People blamed, you know, people that shouldn't have been blamed, including, you know, us for certain things. And it's just not fair. People got thrown under the bus that did not... Like there were people that weren't even in the building that day that ended up getting thrown under the bus because of this whole thing. And it's just, that's not fair. Like Billy was really affected by it. Like, I mean, like Billy has been through the war in poker, you know, and we give him an opportunity. He loves it, gets to build games. He gets to commentate, build games on the show and also on the floor. Like he's done so much like hustlers is home. And like, he's not even there that day. And then like all of a sudden people are throwing him on the bus, like, oh, Billy's cheating because let's go look at these hands. That has nothing to do with the issue at hand. It's about one hand and one show. It has nothing to do with Billy. It has nothing to do with Nick playing. It has nothing to do with, you know, these other people, hand signals and all that bullshit. Like, no, that's so stupid. Like it, it's coming up because people want to just throw everybody under the bus that's even remotely involved in our show because of one hand. And that's not fair. Like if Robbie did something, if anything happened, which again, I, I don't really think it did. Um, then like it, it should be focused on that and that's it. And that alone. And so I, I don't really blame Joey that much because, you know, Joey's creating content. He's allowing, you know, people to come up and speak their piece and, you know, and, and Joey did his best to, cause he knows us. Joey did, did his best to be fair and, and say like, you know, and, and to back us up and to like, you know, get rid of some of the crazy conspiracy theorists that wanted to come on a stream. But, um, but some of the other people were like, yeah, I remember it was a Charlie or who, who was it? Uh, it was somebody else. Oh, there was like, uh, was it Russell Thomas? Is that who it was? I think it might've been him. Yeah. That like, posted something on Twitter one time about Billy and was like, Oh, he definitely did this or whatever. And then like, I think it was Billy that he posted about. And then, and then like people started, you know, saying like, Hey, you should look into this, like look at the hands. And then he like reviewed it overnight. And then he's like, Oh, never mind. There's nothing there. And it's just like, well, why did you jump to that conclusion and say definitively, definitively on your platform first that like, Oh yeah, this guy's for sure cheating. You know, when you literally then looked at it for five hours and came back and said, no, never mind. Like you could have done that, that work first before you come out and try to damage someone's reputation. So all of that stuff that happened, and I don't even remember all of it, was the part that was the most hurtful to everybody. And um, that's the part that sucked the most, you know. So moving forward, we, we saw Garrett come back to Bally's. That was his grand, uh, grand Garrett opening. And... Um, you could have had him here, I think. I uh, why why are you not allowing Garrett and Robbie on the show? I've asked Nick a million times, but I'm curious mm. why you wouldn't want him back on the show. So there's a bunch of different reasons, but m above everything else, more than anything else, it's about the players. And so one, there's there's players that feel strongly that um, like they just don't think he should be on the show. Um, because of how he handled the situation. Um, also, it's really hard for us to put games together with him. He's a really good player. Um, if he was back in the show, could we do it once in a blue moon? Yeah, maybe. Did he want but control like, over the lineup? Uh, 
Yeah, of course. He always, you know, <laughs> he always want to control. Does that the lineup. make your job harder though? Because aren't you the one controlling the lineups? Uh, yeah. It it definitely wasn't fun for me, just uh, dealing with that. I would say so. Uh, to back it up, like I would say before the Jack forehand ever happened, it was really hard to put together Friday lineups for those few months before that. Um, because, you know, he wants a certain standard of lineups. He wanted a certain, like, you know, quality of players playing and he wanted the lineup to be perfect for him to play. He would always say, like, I don't have to play poker, but like, if I'm going to play, like, I want this kind of lineup. And he would be very selective and very nitpicky with like, well, why are you putting this person in? And you know, sometimes there's just players that are decent players that are just like part of our family. The rating system. Right. Right. But but also there's like people that are, you know, yeah, low on his ratings, right? That that are just like part of our family, like a Nick Airball, for example, right? And it's like we want them on the show because they're part of our crew. If there's a seat open, like let's fill it with somebody that's deserving. Um, but he's like, no, like let's just keep it six handed, right? And so that that was the that was really tough and those few months before like we were struggling and if you go back and look at some of our friday lineups they weren't great and and i think maybe a few times we maybe did a taped game or something i don't remember um sometimes we would wind up starting six handed and then you know someone gets busted especially from garrett and yeah. then like we yeah. wind up four or five handed that happened in the game remember the one once. time i had to come into the game because the game yeah. almost broke um and that's why i like to keep games full i like to keep them eight nine handed because if people bust i want the people to feel comfortable and like recreational players like most of them don't like playing five six handed like yeah. they like playing full and so, so it's if tougher you're a to pro play six handed and you're a killer you want it to be short yeah right. of course right yeah. and you want to be able to pick who you want there and it's just a fucking smorgasbord and that's see that's the whole thing and i'm just going to step in because you know i'm passionate about it but like the whole golden boy oh no and saying all the right things <coughs> that's what really was happening and it was hurting our business yeah so so, so <clears throat> i mean so i would say I will say that, you know, it happens in poker or uh, it has happened recently in poker uh, or, or with our show even where like um, players do get b become table selectors, right? It's happened more and more over the years as private games evolve, as streams evolve, like people that didn't care about lineups before now care about lineups. Like they are game selectors, right? Most of them though, they just like say, I'll play or I won't play or they ask what the lineup is. Very few of them actually will like try to actually micromanage the lineup and say like, well, why don't you get this person instead of this person? But the, the, the few people that ever have even tried to do that with me, which usually I always push back and say like, no, no, we need this player, right? Um, they, um, the, the few players that have, like they're people that deserve it, that have like get give action, that swing hard, that make crazy plays, that straddle, that give up EV. And so I, I think that one of the tough things was with Garrett is one, like everyone knew that Garrett was already the best player. He was the best player on our show. He's a great player, world-class player, right? Um, he's he's winning a lot of money on the stream and after the stream, right? Um, um, a big complaint from some of our recreational players, and or not even just recreationals, but a lot of our players that played with him, were that you know he he didn't ever want to like really give up EV, right? He he's not into straddling on his own randomly just for fun like a lot of players are. Like a lot of players in these private games, it's 100, 200. They're like I'll straddle or like they'll just randomly put in a straddle because. It's just fun. It's a show. It's a game. Why not? What, what's what's it hurt, right? 400 bucks or whatever. Um, where he would only do it if, like, everyone wanted to do it for a round, right? If not, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. If one person – I remember one time he got mad at Nick because Nick missed a straddle. He, goes, he, he sat bathroom. out that round, and he, like, made some comment to Nick, like, oh, I guess you're just going to, like, steal $200 or something. Like, something yeah. – I don't even say steal. I remember. I was in seat nine. Like I was in seat nine. He was in seat eight. Yeah. I remember exactly. Yeah, and it was really awkward. So – just things like that that um, rub some people the wrong way. And so because of that, like, um, you know, he was always just trying to win a lot of money. And He would which, not give which up is okay. any like, EV. Right. He's a great player. But, but, but if you look at, like, other people who obviously aren't as good as Garrett, like, nobody really is on our show. But, like, but like Jungle Man, for example, great player. Look at the EV Jungle Man gives up in the show. He understands it's a show, right? He is, he is like, three betting jack three off. He's like nine, four off. He's like making crazy plays. He's strat like he's doing crazy things. Right. And I think that in dresses up like the, macho man, Randy yeah, Savage. Yeah. I and, mean, and, yeah, he's in, an entertainer in the day and age we're in with private games and streams. Like people have an expectation of what the best players will do. Right. If it's like, look, I know he's great, but I'll play with him because he does X, Y, Z, which makes him fun to play with. And I think that as time went on, you know, in 2022, um, 
I was getting complaints from players where they just were like, I'm not playing with Garrett, right? And it wasn't because he's like not a nice person. Like 99% of people think he's a really nice person and a really cool person and great to hang out with. Like, uh, uh, like would go to the bar with him, right? But playing at the poker table with him, they saw him as a killer and they saw these EV things. And, you know, there were a handful, I'll be honest with you, like there were a handful of, of recreational players that literally told me I'm not playing if he plays. And so that made it harder to build these Friday games because some of them played with him before that and then stopped. And um, yeah, then after the Jack Four thing, you know, more players got turned off because um, they didn't like the way he handled it. They didn't like the way, they didn't like the 135k thing. And you know, there was even a couple of players that said, if he plays on your show, like I won't play on your show. Like not not just with him, but like at all. And so all of this combined, you know, made it a lot easier for us to say like, no, um, sorry. Like, it's just, it's too hard for us to build a game for you, let alone everything else. Right. Like players are uncomfortable playing with, with him. Um, he has a certain standard of lineups. Like, how are we going to even, if we did want him back, how are we going to get those lineups together that he wants at this point, um, that are good enough for him and getting those players to play? It's just too tough. And so, and it's just a headache to do. Um, and we just realized we started right after that we started putting together um we went in a different direction put together like juicier lineups like and 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 all of a sudden like everyone was buying in deeper and and the pots were bigger right if you looked at the top 25 pots of 2022 video we have on our youtube uh, i think 24 of them uh garrett wasn't in the game i believe Uh, i could be wrong but i think that's what it was um i think the one with dylan was the only one that was in the top 25 and that's because the games got bigger and juicier and people were more comfortable buying in deeper um, with the lineups that we were able to build later in the year. And we realized, like, this is fun. Like, this is sustainable. We can do this, right? Um, and um, so all of that kind of played into, like, why we made the decision and said, like, you know what? Like, you know, it, look, if, if he, people have asked me recently, like, what would it take to get Garrett back on the show, Right. And I don't know at this point, we'd have to discuss if anything ever would, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know because we made our decision. But there's only there's one thing that would even make it a consideration where it would even be a discussion would be if he if he paid Robbie back because that's the thing that most people, a lot of people are uncomfortable with, the fact that that happened. And, you know, um, we would get a lot of, um, for the, from the fans, we would get a lot of, negative feedback like obviously there'd be a lot of people that'd be excited don't get me wrong we'd get a lot of views the first couple times he played right but there'd be a lot of people we'd lose too and a lot of negative feedback and comments because people would say how could you let him back on the show when on your show at your casino he you know stole or whatever you want to call it you know the money from her and and I, I, so I think that would be the prerequisite um, but I know that would never happen and so it is what it is and you know so why not have Robbie back on um, I think the same reason like just there'd be a lot of negative comments of just like people that still think that she did something um or you know there's also just the other stuff that the the question unanswered questions of why'd she lie about these weird things here and Mm -hmm. there i think it's just like the unanswered questions would just lead to a lot of negative feedback um uh and and then i think it's just better to just leave them both off because of all the questions and um but to be fair like neither one of them have ever come to us once and said, Hey, can I play on the show? She's never asked. Yeah. So, so I what, think there was so, one time Garrett said, uh, is there a seat open for the money? Oh yeah. Game? But he was kind of trolling yeah. too, but <clears throat> yeah, but, but yeah, Robbie never came to us and said, look, if Robbie came, ever came to us and said like, Hey, I really want to play on the show. Like, let's discuss, like maybe we'd have a conversation at least, but like she's never asked. So like, we've never even had to have that issue. You know, we've never had to have that conversation and even decide, um, but if it's up to us in terms of just like do open invite, like, you know, it's just, uh, look, people will say that sounds crazy because, um, on our show, we have so much drama. Right. But my mindset is like, I don't want drama. Like I get that drama is good for ratings, but like, we're not like artificially trying to create drama and trying to, you know, bring crazy situations onto our show or fights or anything like that. Like, no, we, the number one goal of our show at least from my perspective, has always been just create the best, the juiciest, the softest private games possible. That's it. And then we'll put them on the internet and people can watch. And that's it. We're we're not trying 
Dude, like, yeah, once in a while we're going to bring in big names because that's cool, obviously. But, like, we're just trying to put together the most fun, softest, juiciest games five days a week. <clears throat> and um, hopefully that entertains people enough to watch. That's it. So you and Garrett were friends. Sorry. Okay. I just want to I want to clarify this. You and Garrett were friends as far as I know before this all happened. Has it affected your friendships? Are you guys still friends? I wouldn't say, I don't know if friends is the right word because like, yeah, we hung out a handful of times back in the day. Um, and I, I'd say as time evolved, um, we were still maybe friends, but we were more like, um, it was more of like a business relationship, right? Like we had a show and he wanted to play on the show and make money and build his, his brand and we wanted to build our brand. And it was a mutual understanding. And he knew that him playing on the show was good for us. And, uh, and, and, and we knew that too. Um, and he also knew that, you know, because everyone knows how good he is, that it's really hard for him to get in games or build games. Um, and we were the best opportunity for him to build games for him to make money. Right. So there was a mutual understanding there. And I say, as time evolved, it was, it was more of that. Um, there wasn't as much like hanging out or anything like that. Um, but we did get along really like, 90% of the time we got along really well and it was a good relationship. We had our ups and downs. We had our issues when we had two hour conversations on the phone about lineups and me about me not inviting him to a Keating game or something like that. Um, but, um, since then we haven't talked much. I saw him once or twice ever, um, texted or talked to him on the phone, maybe, or, or Twitter spaces, you know, three or four times ever. Um, before the live, the bike or not live, like the Bally's game recently, I, I just texted him and said, Hey man, like, um, just, you know, good luck. Uh, hope all is well, you know, whatever, just kind of just like a simple little, little, uh, nice text just to let him know, like no bad blood or whatever. Um, but yeah, I would say if we saw each other, we would shake hands, you know, maybe have a drink together, um, have a five minute conversation. Um, but beyond that, it's it's not much. But I, I think that there's no real personal like hatred from either of us. I don't think. Um, yeah, I kind of I kind of still want to dive into that or it's fine. just like the yeah. whole, the whole Jack Four stuff. Because like uh, for me, like just I want to say like I'm e able to fairly easily uh, separate like business ish with personal stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like. Like I can like someone, but hate dealing with them, right? Or I can like dealing with someone, but like really hate them as a person. Like, like that's, they're, they're different. You know what I mean? And so like, do I think he's, you know, like I, I think he's okay as a, as a person. Like I think he's mostly like a good person and he's, he's cool. But I just think that like, um, there was just some things business-wise which is really important because you know lives really important to me that that made it tough to to to, to kind of coexist at, at times so nick always talks about garrett should have worked with hustler garrett should have contacted you guys and helped like is there a world where garrett could have helped you guys uncover something with the whole jack four stuff i mean to be fair i don't think there was anything to uncover like but i i think there's definitely a world where he could have worked with us because like he said that day or, or the day after you know i don't think anything happened with the production guys like blah 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 i trust them this that right and so if he actually felt that way and he knows that me and nick would never like ever be doing anything malicious and that like if something happened it had nothing to do with me and nick like if he knows that right then he knows that it's okay to work with us and to to come to us and say like, Hey, like, let's figure this out together or let's figure out how we should handle this together. But he did his thing on his own and, and we kind of had to do our thing on our own. And, and that's kind of where that went. But certainly like things could have went differently, I think. And maybe we would have felt differently. Do you, if do you think it was fair the way he handled it? Uh, not really, not really. I mean, you know, I think that he threw some people under the bus that because he just wanted to throw conspiracy theories out there or things that people were in his ear about. Um, and I, I think that jumping to conclusions is is never good, especially in something extreme as that. And so for him to come out blatantly right away and say that he knows 100%, like, you know, that's just crazy because 
nobody knows 100% anything unless you have evidence or proof or an admission or anything like that, right? And so, like, obviously, it like, it's not 100% because there hasn't been a lick of actual evidence or anything since then. And, you know, you look Would at, you support it if there was? If what? If if he actually had something, would you support it? Would you? Well, I would support it, it if it was true. I mean, true. there's circumstantial it depends, evidence, right? If it was, if it was true, yeah, Hold of course. Let me, there's let me, circumstantial evidence, let me, right? Let me, yeah. let me say something. If he had some evidence that was actually evidence, we would support it. We want the of truth. Of course. No. Yes. You know, it, it sounds crazy and no one's probably going to believe this, but like when it first happened- It would be easier I, if, if no, there was. I was, I was actually rooting Same. for like it to have happened. Um, I know that would make us look bad and be horrible PR wise. We would have got through it. But but um, I just wanted a closure. conclusion, like closure. Yeah, I hate the idea of not knowing something a hundred percent or zero percent. Like I think it's a super low percent at this point. But I think that um, I I really wanted to like know. I just wanted to know. Like I I don't know. And maybe it's like just watching like CSI and stuff like that, you know, but like you want to like get the truth at the end of the episode and be like, boom, here it is. You know? Sure. I I don't know. Like I, I I just made it harder. I I hate the idea of like, you know, I don't know. So like even thinking in my head, like, man, like when I would see different things while I was going on about Brian or whatever, being like, Oh my God, did this guy really do this to us? Like what the hell, you know? And then still there's just no a hundred point zero percent. Um, so yeah, I actually was rooting for us to find something out. It would have been easier than, you know, the ongoing not knowing was harder on us. Than yeah, anything. it was. Yeah, it kept absolutely. more conspiracy shit going. So absolutely. you mind if I say a couple of things before? Oh you, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I just want to touch on a couple of things that, that were said and say it's going to be the same thing Ryan said, but said a little differently and, and a couple redundantly, but I want to, I want to make a point like. You had mentioned before, Val, that like I'm so business oriented, but on this one, it's so personal. And would we ever have him back on the show? And it kind of shocks you that I've been a hard no. See, for me, it's like this. Um, could I say that it could never happen? No, because I'm never going to say that. But yes, all the things Ryan are, has, are, is saying, I have said the, the lineups are better, the, uh, the, the games are better. Blah, so all that's true, right? But for me, there is a principle in this that like, you accused our show of something you don't have any proof of, although it's okay for you to believe that. I've said all this before. Um, you have now attacked because, you know, the reason he hates me is because I have had the mic and I will answer a question and I was truthful about everything Ryan <coughs> just said, but I was more detailed, like the fact that like Ryan really was having a hard time putting our shows together. Our viewership was af- being affected. Our players were were starting to rebel against us before Jack 4. People started not liking him because word got around that he didn't want Airball to play, didn't want Art to play, didn't want yeah. this guy to play, didn't want that. So now our players are like, fuck you. No, that's not on us. That's on him because those were his tactics when he was trying to be something else outwardly. And so he put all this pressure on the show. And I've said this a lot to you where I've said like, I've had... He's not the only one who had two hour conversations with him about lineups. I used to have two hour conversations yep. with him about listen, please understand that this is a two way relationship and we are running a show. And yes, you're important. And yes, you get views, but you're hurting us this way. You're killing, you're, 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 you're trying to get it too fast. Like you got to give yeah. up something. The straddle thing. Yeah, like the straddle constantly. Like, like, I can think of the, the the million dollar game, and even when he made that comment to me, I'm like, "Fuck you!" I went to the bathroom. You know, I'm not even thinking at this level. The what? Like, what are you talking about? When I went to the bathroom, and he mentioned me getting free two hundred dollars or whatever the straddle. You mentioned it. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. that was insane. Yeah. So it's just like, first of all, I'm the owner of the fucking show. There's yeah. got to be some respect, and I would never do that. And you're so worried about every little eat piece of EV for you. It's just like, and then I see. Yeah, like, like, like we we had to like make it where on Fridays, um, because he wanted this like where you had to wait for the big blind or straddle your way in or post, um, because he cared a lot about you know nobody missing a straddle about nobody getting free hands nobody he thought people would abuse that and like come in in the cutoff and this and that and try to like, but no one's doing that. In a, nobody in a good private game. If they are, then like we won't invite them back. But like. Since then, since, like since he's been gone, we got rid of that. Where now, every 
day, including Fridays, you like before it was only Fridays you had to do that. Every every other day we were fine, but now it's just even on Fridays, like nobody posts. Like you come in for free if you miss. And also we got rid of the action clock, you know, and so Yeah. Which um, yeah. We we did a lot to like I would list I would whatever he wanted to do, like for the most part, like I would listen, you know, and because sorry to cut you off, but No, it's okay. I, I respect it's better coming from you because yeah. me they expect I respected him a lot. I I respected our relationship. I care. I don't know if I respect like I cared a lot about our relationship. Like I always wanted that. Um, you were a little afraid too yeah, that yeah. it was going to no, no. backfire on I you know. if you like, didn't give him right, what he wanted. Right. Like I always want because he was good at leverage. There was right? fear. He, he was, was leveraging leverage. you. Um, I always I was worried that he was going to be mad at me, be upset, wouldn't play, go play on the other show. You'd always be like, well, if it's not good enough, I'm going to go play at the bike, you know? And, and so I would cave in and do what he wanted. Like, so, you know, like for years, like, because I knew how important he was to the show. I knew he was the biggest draw. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the action clock, the, this rule, that rule, you know, the players like don't invite this player, but invite this player, make it six. Eight. Like I would try my best to do all of those things for him because I cared, you know, and, um, you know, since then there's nobody else. And, and I know there's nobody as big as him that plays regularly, but like, you know, no one else is like that. And, and like I said, once in a while, someone's like, I don't want to play with this player, but yeah. it's not like a thing where they're micromanaging every lineup and like, I'm not going to play if the lineup's good enough. Like, it's just like you, but I, I think it's okay to it, not okay, but it's like more okay to do that. If like you're losing a lot. Right. Or if you're like you're crazy bringing action something to the table. Yeah. Um, but when you're the biggest, the best player that everyone knows, and you're the biggest winner and you're up 1.5 million. It's like you should be a little bit more OK with like any lineup and just be happy to play in any poker game. Like, yeah, you don't have to play. But like, I mean, just like one point five million dollars, a lot of money, you know, for, for a year. And, and he won a lot more off stream. Yeah. And, you know, like, you know, Pete. So here's the thing, you know, people like to do this thing like, you know, Ryan and I, like Ryan this, he runs every, but Ryan and I talk daily and Ryan and I, Ryan would come to me and tell me about these things. We would have long conversations and my vote, although he does the lineups, so he gets the final say, I do the business, I get the final say, he, I would tell him, don't put up with it. I, this was happening months before this all blew up. I'd be like, look, dude. And I wasn't sure myself. I'll admit it. I wasn't sure myself because he was popular. But I'm like, Ryan, like, this isn't right, bro. Like, you know, and going back to the other thing, like I said, the reason he hates my guts, we feel the same, but he hates me because I was willing to say it for the last two years. We go back to the all-star game that I've mentioned a bunch of times. And this is the stuff that started disgusting me. I would see a guy like Iron sitting in the game that wanted to play the 2550 and that's it. That's all he wanted to play. That was his bankroll. Fucking take one day to celebrate the yeah. show yeah. and to be cool. We got double M in small. there. Sush Andy playing with you know Iron and some other. Sashimi five. was, was in there. Yeah, yeah, it was right? Sashimi. Yeah, yeah. And Sashimi, I've said this before, and Ron it came to us. It was before she played big too. Yeah. How about yeah. this? He had told Andy, but just to tell him and Garrett especially, please not this show. Like, don't do the straddle double straddle. Let these people enjoy their time. They were picked. And, you know, Shishimi and Ron both came to me. And, and again, when he started firsthand, he put the straddle on. He didn't give a fuck what we said or about that person. And you got Ron, who's too embarrassed to look whatever. And Shishimi, before she was probably staked, that didn't want to play that high. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, the, what do you just want to take every fucking penny from them right now? Like, they don't have the bankroll to have the double straddle on and to be all in in one yeah. hand. Calm fucking down, you know? And him and I, we that's the worst time sitting at the table. There was so much tension between him and I because I had specifically talked to him, called him, and texted him and said, please, I especially remember. today. Yeah. And he fucking did it anyways and gave me a look. And it's like that's that's the to me that's the true garrett not the 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 get on the mic and i just you know want poker to be great i you know i want to make this and you know and he says all the right things because he's so eloquent even when he went on the spaces the other and he just gives the statement but he won't take any questions he won't be questioned about it he's full of shit now see i said the same thing he said but i said it differently because that's my style and that's why people but that's true that's why people are like no oh, fuck this guy's not a businessman no bullshit like I would never want him on the show again, but I have a partner, and if my partner did, and I would just not come into the casino that day, I would entertain the conversation, but my vote is no. So I know that there were a lot of uh, podcasters, you know, talking about the Jack Four stuff, but why do you think Berkey specifically went after Hustler and you, especially Nick, so hard? Uh, it's, a, it's a weird one. I, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I think that he likes to say that he cares so much about the, I don't know about the community and this and that. And, you know, but I, I think that like the problem is that he constantly will just like say things as a fact and come to a conclusion without actually doing his, his real due diligence or like they'll just come out and say it without actually knowing the facts. You know what I mean? And I think that's the, the thing that, that I have the issue with him the most is just, you know, he's allowed to have opinions and whatever, but when he uses something in the middle of it as a, as a fact and it's like completely not true, like that's the part that gets me all, all worked up. Um, but it's weird. Like right before the Jack four, I, we were mostly good. Like we were talking the, have was him the week come before or was it the week after? It was, a, it, it was after. Right after, right? See, because what you might hear, yeah, let me say this and then it. take it. Yeah. After Jack 4, I specifically, along, not you on this part, but I specifically was answering Berkey's questions. I told him that he could come in and be part of the investigation. And anything he asked me, I answered him honestly. So yeah. we were okay for a minute. And, and then and he was we, were in a, we were he in was... a three-way thread to get yeah. him to come play. That's such a great point that I never thought of. But but he asked after Jack Four, no, but, he was going to come play. No, but he asked us to play. I don't think I. Asked. Yeah, and he couldn't make it because he was playing pickleball. No, no, that's not what happened. Oh. He 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 wanted to bring. <laughs> but I remember something like that. No, he wanted to bring. I won't say who, but he wanted to bring a recreational player. Okay. And he was like, he uh, we were talking about something else. This was after Jack Four. Yeah, I okay. I can check the text, but yeah. I think I think it was like the week after and. Uh, that's he, such a good point. He Pickleball. said, he said, oh, I can bring this player. Uh, like, can I play this Friday or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, or, or something like that. And I was just like, yeah, sure. Let me know. And then like something like, he's like, oh, but I think he might want to play at the bike. We might have to play at the bike because he has bike chips or something like that. And like, he ended up playing with him at the bike instead of playing on our show. And that was it. And then all of a sudden, like two days later, is, let me try to find the text. I was just doing the same thing. Uh, um, like two days later, he he went off and like just whatever happened, he just information he got, he just like jumped to conclusions and just started like hated us. Like all of a sudden after being cool with us two days earlier, he just like went off on us. So yeah. what, what was the biggest lie that he that he like harped on? About that thing? No, like what was the thing that, because you said that he was just coming up with conclusions that were not true. What was the Big, the worst thing that he said or did during that time? Uh, I don't know. Do you remember, Nick? I, I, I mean... I, I, I want it from Ryan. Yeah. Because it's going to just look bad if Nick I, It's so just... long ago. I don't, I don't remember. Um, it's fine. You don't have to give me an exact thing. I'm just... I didn't know that you that he was supposed to come play. To I forgot. Can you imagine it? Um, I think just like him kind of like because of what he was told, like assuming like how our setup was in our control room and, and this and that without actually knowing it or seeing it. Like just saying like, Oh, how could you do this? Or how could you do that? And it's like, he doesn't run a stream. He doesn't understand how things work. He, tried. he doesn't understand how our specific production works. And he was just like jumping to conclusions about like how crazy it is that we're doing this and that that's insecure in his opinion. And also like, saying that like, well, every other stream does this. And when they didn't, you know, like yeah. they, one or two of them tried to change it afterwards. But like before that, we always had the, the, we always were the ones that set the standards for security. Like we were the first ones to take phones away. Um, we were the first ones to like, you know, wand people. We were like everything. Um, and like after that, people started you know, oh, well, maybe we have to, like, you know, hide our cards or whatever. But, like, basically, like, everybody followed us. And, like, it's he like, was saying we, the bike was doing something they weren't doing specifically. Because I remember you saying that. You're like, they're not doing that. They might yeah. have after. Yeah, yeah. It was bullshit. You mean as far as, like, security here, measures? A certain point, here's yeah. the thing. We all know the bike here, security. Here's the difference between us and other people, right? <clears throat> when you're running a business or whatever, you, you can go out and, like, say things because you it's PR and you want to look good. Right. And you're like, we do this and we're the utmost leaders in security and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But there's like literally no evidence, no proof. No one's ever seen it, but you can just say it. Right. And you're great at putting out statements and saying things, 
or you can just be honest and and uh, forthright and, and do podcasts and do interviews and spaces and literally just say, this is what we do and this is what we're going to work on, right? And that's the difference between us and other people is like me and Nick, we're willing to be out there and admit our faults and talk about what we need to improve on and, and, and talk about like, this is what everything is. And when Doug Polk comes in, when there's this big thing going on, hey, Doug, you check it out and you do your own you know, um, there's no show going on. It's the he morning. blasted us like, for that because we let yeah, Doug in the production room Doug, with we're ten up people. Here with security, like, look at the room. Like, you can report whatever you want, right? And yet, no other stream does that. And you could say like, oh well, it's because they're secure and they don't let anyone in the control room. Well, we have nothing to hide. We're showing you, right? Yeah. If you come and in so, with security, yeah. I want to see the. Text. Are you gonna trust the guy? Are you, I mean. It, you, you can have an opinion the other way. I'm just putting this out there rhetorically. Are you going to trust the, the guy that says, I have nothing to hide. Here it is. Look at it. I'll answer every question. Or the guy that says like, this is what it is, but I'm not going to show you the proof. Yeah. You know? And, and that was kind of like one of my beefs during it is like, he's assuming, um, he's assuming other streams are doing certain things. One of which was the bike when I worked there and I know what they're doing. And it was just like, to me, it's like, it's literally impossible. Like it's bullshit. And you know, even if it's true, there's no way to prove that. Then like anyone can say they're doing something, but like, we're literally offering you Berkey. Hey, come here and look, but what's he going to do? Us what we need he's to not, he's not a security expert, but he thinks he is. You know how many things that, that but he are, has a voice. that our cyber analyst yeah, said he was wrong about there's yeah. like more than a handful. Yeah, look at the report, and he's like, "That's I, impossible. That's impossible. You can't do that." I almost did a they, podcast. All their podcasts are talking about like, "Oh, well, what if she did this device?" And they're like, "No, that's impossible. That's not how it works." I almost did a podcast with the main guy that did the investigation on uh, what our PR guy I won't say his name put together. Every, like I forget where it is, but like all these comments that Berkey made, and our guys like not possible, not possible. That's not true. That doesn't work that way. And I almost did a podcast with him going over each point when I was really on one. Yeah. And I like we decided to let it go. You remember? Like we're oh, like, oh, you no, never did that. Yeah, oh. I never did it. So October first, what what day was Robbie? Was that September thirtieth or something? Twenty ninth. Okay. 29th. October second is that's when the conversation. No, started. October first. Yeah, there it is. So the the Robbie thing was like September 29th, right? Now think about this. He's willing to come on 29th. our show. Yeah, that's what it was. He's telling us to shut down, but he's willing to come on our show. Go ahead. I so October first. So this was two days later. So it was two days after. So Robbie happened on like a Thursday. This was on Saturday. Matt. Oh, so I I said Matt. Did you want to play this? I don't know how this happened. This there must have been some other conversation that happened, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Doug was going to play that next Friday. Oh, he did. Cause that's when he came. Right. Yeah. So I said, Matt, did you want to play this Friday with Doug or no? If not, let's schedule something else soon. He said, short answer is yes. The more complicated answer is, can anyone swap hustler chips for bike? I planned to be there yesterday to wire my player's account back, but my flight got canceled. So I never made it. It's if it's a hassle, I can play some other time. I have a pickleball tourney Thursday and Saturday. Anyway, told you. Right? Yeah. Told you. Um, and we said, you know, Nick just said like, Oh shit. Just lost it. I gotta go back. Um, Nick just said basically, um, we can't deal with that. We can't do anything. You have to like talk. We can't do that. We're promoters. Yeah. It's against yeah. our rules. Yeah, yeah. So he's talking about how much and money. Said, we said how yeah, much. He you said basically, you're saying you don't touch the chips, right? And yeah. he said, well, about 100k is what he needed swapped. Nick said, all I hear from everyone is pickleball must be fun. He's um, Nick said, I'm currently in croquet tournaments. Yeah, um, <laughs> and I still pull my hand, pull a hammy now and then. Was that real? Yeah, um, joke. Uh, <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, so we just said, yeah, you have to ask someone else. We can't coordinate that. Um, and then uh, I said, if it works, let me know by Monday. If not, let's just do another week. I'm good either way. He, and he said, hey, guys, just to keep you in the loop so it doesn't look odd, I'm going to play at the bike Thursday and Friday. A wreck, my friends, wants to play there, so I'm going to accommodate him. If we don't play after the stream Friday, I'll text you, and I'll try to get him to come up. And you said, okay, thanks, Matt. Thanks for the text. Um, so that was October 2nd now. So that was, that was three days after um, and then, da, 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 and then we're talking about the game, about the other player that he invited. Um, I was telling him about the game. He said, okay, I'm just trying to be appease him to be honest. But if I end up coming Thursday now, I'll try to figure something out chips wise. Um, Nick was said, it would be great if you play. Um, Berkey just said it may be tough cause I can't miss my flight back. Pickleball journey, this and that, whatever. And then, uh, yeah. So that was literally that was three days after this happened. So, so like there was no issue until like a week after it happened uh, when he talked to someone else and then 
they started speculating, talking about, you know, what our control room looks like. And he got basically offended by the fact that like our commentator room was connected to the back of the control room and that like, but it is separate. I have. Yeah. And, and also like we have the space we have at the casino. We're not poker go. Like we don't have some extravagant setup. Like they gave us a, like an attic. Basically. Here's one thing. The Here's one room. thing you asked him to do because he got it wrong. Ryan, you said to him, can you please debunk this dumb thing about Rip having a friend named Louise? LOL. Louise is our floor man. I don't know why he said my boy Louise. He said just saying the casual Rip said he played tourney once. Blah, 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 blah. And, he, and then there's no more. And then you said, we're told it's a deckmate one. We were working with him, telling him deckmate one this, telling him to come down. And then I think they reported something that they heard about Luis, which is our floor man. And he was fucking leveled. He's like, what the fuck? And Ryan's like, can you please like kind of take that back? You're wrong. It's right here. And yeah. then there was no more communication after yeah, that. Yeah, he just ignores when I... And then he just ignored it because he got on one and that was it. I... So you're not friends with him anymore, I'm assuming. No, what, has he? Really. Do you think that what he did potentially ruined the brand of HCL? Then you guys had to like get, build it back up, or no. do you think no. it just put more eyes on it? And no, you're it just made just the super... only Friends podcast popular. Really? <laughs> uh, he, they were. We were the wind in his sails. Anyways, it's gonna I mean, be look, a... like people took shots at us, and people attacked us. At our integrity personally mm -hmm. our business all of that and we're still here and we're still on top and so what does that tell you you know what i mean and so look like people can say what they want about me and nick about other people connected to us our business but we know the truth about everything right and we know the type of people we are the integrity we have and all of that um have we made perfect decisions in every single aspect of business no absolutely not like we're human yeah and there's a lot of trial and error and all of that and learning right like we were the people that were willing to go out there and put a report out about like all of the things that we needed to improve and then improve them. Right. Um, we understand that we're not perfect. Um, but you know, we, we put together the best stream before that we put together the most secure stream before that. Right. Like other streams were not as secure as us and were we perfect? Absolutely not far from it, but we learned from it and that's it. And like, just, you know, we took offense by the fact that he, him and other people were just so harsh on us and like acting as if we're like bad people for like little things that, you know, we didn't realize. Oh, so what he's going to do, just so you know what he's going to do, he's going to go, oh, Ryan Feldman said little things. Well, what about this? That, you know, so yeah. he's going to spin this. Yeah. But the, the takeaway is this. This is the real takeaway. So he doesn't get a chance to say shit like that. The real takeaway is you were offered to come in and look and do your own investigation. You were offered to, to wing and parallel our investigation. You were in communication with us and we would have answered any question. You illegally recorded our employee and came back and regurgitated the shit backwards. So fuck you. So let me ask you a question. Regardless of how I feel about Berkey. Yeah. Because I've always respected him a lot in the poker community. And we were friends. But let me ask you, why the fuck would you... Who's Berkey to come in and do an investigation? He's not. But the point is, is if you're going to get on a mic and you're going to be a pompous dick and say how it is and act like an expert, which you're not, and you're going to put the wrong type of eyes on us and the wrong type of impression. Instead of doing that, if you're really in pursuit of the truth, what it was is an offer to say, if you're really in pursuit of the truth, come and see the truth. Don't just keep talking about shit you don't but my, know. But my thing is, he's he nobody. doesn't, if he, no, he, he is somebody. He has I don't leverage. Mean, and, but uh, well, what I'm, my, my thing is, he's not a cybersecurity expert. Yeah. So he knows what he does. He knows what he thinks is well, wrong. Well, we were going to give him a free but education. Let me finish. Let me finish. How would he know if things were right? He has no ability to understand that, right? Yeah. So, so you wouldn't have satisfied anything because he doesn't even know what to well, look for. He's not could, a cybersecurity expert. No, but what could have happened, he could have sat with an expert who could have straightened his ass out and showed him the truth, and he could have went back with the truth. It doesn't matter. Like it, When people have opinions... They're going to have opinions and it's hard to change. No, that. I think and, it's fine that he has an and, opinion. And I just don't understand no, no, how I'm he was the expert he, who should have come he, in to look at the no, live. He stream. thinks he's an expert in everything. He thinks he's an anthropologist, a pediatrician, uh, everything. So <laughs> he's like, a proctologist, really. Yeah. He's a that was going to be my joke. <laughs> was it? How do you have hey, a baby? Yeah. What? Oh, fuck. We, 
Yeah, we just messed it up twice. <laughs> I'm sorry. God, we can't even get in sync about anything. Uh, but, he, but like... <laughs> um, we have one mind. It's like he had uh, an opinion based on the information he had and decided to just be like mad at us. Because of that information. Well, he was really that, mad too because I outed him on the internet that he illegally recorded. No, no, but this is before that. I'm saying yeah. before that. I'm saying when he first had an opinion and, and had all this stuff before we knew why. Like, he was like angry at us and talking shit at us for a couple of days, right? And that was like when it all started. And he had that opinion already. And he was set on it. And, and he was set on that. And it yeah. doesn't matter what you do. Like, you know, we can go have a cybersecurity team like we did and they can put a report out and it doesn't matter. Like, he's just going to be like, well, they were not good enough. And his recent was thing, PR thing, his right? recent thing two years later was that we didn't put the deck made information in the report. Yeah. And, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, well, you, you didn't tell us that that the casino took the cards. Well, it's not your fucking business. Like, it's not none of this is your business. Why is this your business? What we're doing, like the only thing people it matters to is our players. Like if our players know and they're satisfied with what's going on and the casino is satisfied, like that's what matters. Like we don't have to put anything out there. Yeah. Look, we, we did it. We put out the report. We put out what we wanted to do. Ryan Feldman's but, cooking. But like, it's not your business. Why do we owe it to you? Some random ass, you know, dumb podcaster pop? who plays some poker, who's not even a, like, some super pro or anything, just like a guy that happens to have a podcast. Like wh why do we owe it to you specifically personally to tell you that the casino took the cards? Like, no, that's not the, that's not hustler casinos business to put a, a, a press release out. Um, it like, that was obvious. Like they took the cards right away. We didn't touch them. They were in, they were in plastic. The casino compliance had them. We, we, Hi. We didn't have them for a long ass time through this whole investigation because they wanted to look and make sure there was nothing weird with the cards. And guess but what? That, that doesn't, if that's not in the report, that has nothing to do with us. That's not our business. Like we hired a third party independent investigation team. They sent us a report. We put the report on the internet. That's it. And Valerie, one thing I don't know if you know recently about the card stuff. He went on one about that because maybe he just thought of it. Oh, he went on one about the cards because of the Mars incident and being able to see it. So then he went back to Hustler to attack us. And he's like, why well, wasn't the report? And he's doing this Twitter post. The GM of the of, of Hustler Casino, Sean Yapel, responded, cards were sequestered. You're wrong. I saw well, that. Yeah, you did. Okay. So it's just like, shut How up. How are you going to argue with literally the GM of the casino shut who's up. in charge of all this stuff? Like, it, it's just like, it's not your business. It's not like, we don't have to do anything. We'll do what we want to do. And if you don't like it, then don't watch the show. Yeah. Well, well, I don't watch the show. I only watch once. This is not But pure. I have strong opinions this about everything that happens on the show. This is not pure poker. Your commentators suck. Yeah. Let's, let's go into the next thing which is a good lead because Garrett just uh the first time Bally's beat you guys and I don't know if they've beat you since in viewership was when Garrett had his big uh comeback and now Bally's is moving to commerce we we had a we had a whole show talking about how there's like all these new live streams coming up and now commerce what, and I know that you guys brought your idea to commerce and they shot you down. What are your thoughts well, now? We about, wouldn't have went there anyway, but yeah. What are your thoughts now about no, commerce? No, that was never going to happen. That was the one place I, I told Nick. Sorry, before you finish. When we got out of that conversation, I told Nick, like, no chance. We were never going Oh, there. I knew it. I would never want to go what, there. Why? What happened that made uh, you say? It just, I just, uh, some of the management just weren't my... Not poker they, focused. They just no 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 no. no. It's just not my kind of. Val, problem. when we went for our meetings to go get a show before Hustler, we walked out of there together and went, "We won't fucking come here if they offered us the show." It was so disgusting. Yeah, yeah. I'll never get let back just, in saying this shit. The, but it's just I, I don't. I just didn't get along with our management. That's yeah, all. so it's probably the same management, right? And they're. Mm. I mean, Bally's is running the sh the stream, yeah. but like, do you think that there's enough room in LA for two streams? I mean, sure, there is, but. I, I mean, to what degree? I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's like we're doing five days a week, and you know, a lot of our games are really good. Obviously, um, they used to have their show at the bike. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same crew. It's the same show, basically. There's no difference. They just moved down the street. Um, you know, they were struggling a bit to get some good games. Once in a blue moon, if like Eric came and played or something, they had some good ones. But 
Um, sure, they'll they'll get Garrett. I'm sure and uh, that show um, once in a while. But again, they're going to have that struggle of trying to get the games to be good enough um, to be up to his standards. Um, and they might do that once in a while, but um, that's fine. Regularly, it's not that easy. Um, everybody thinks that streaming and putting together games is, is easy and putting together big games is easy and doing it a bunch of days a week is easy. It's not. Um, it's not like an accident that our show is what it is. Like we've put the work in. Yeah, so it, it, it's not easy. Like, we, we have the show that we have and the consistency we have and all of that because of, like, mostly because of the network we've built of players. And that's the thing. It's like people think you can just have a show and have a casino and, like, all of a sudden you have good games. It's just not that easy. You know what I mean? Like, people aren't going to watch unless the lineups are good. And to do that consistently is tough. And they have the same crew, basically, and that they had the bike and more or less. And it, it's just going to be tough, I, I think, um, they're, think- they're going to get the players that we're not able to fit in on our show. Um, and once in a while, they'll get a good one. And that's fine. But it's not going to affect us. We're doing five days a week. We have a big game every Friday. Like, it's we're okay with it. Nothing's going to affect I us. I always talk about you being the secret sauce. Like, Live of the Bike didn't see your vision. And then you brought your vision to someone who who believed in you and still does. And now here we are with your vision with the most successful live stream poker show in the world. Right. Um, I'm just curious if you think that they're able to have that, like that, that, that stuff that makes this no, show so special. Not. I mean, I, I don't, yeah, I don't want to brag about myself or anything like that. But, but do you feel vindicated it, in a way because they they yeah. fired you, right? I mean, they didn't fire me. That's they, that's, they that's fired the biggest. Tuck, they fired. Ha- that's the that's no, the biggest. Hansen. That's the biggest they myth. They him. didn't fire me. You want me to tell well, you what actually yeah, happened? Yeah, tell me. They, I've told it before. But you they, must feel vindicated. People that say I got fired from Live of the Bike. It, you got it's fired. So stupid. I did not get fired. <laughs> I've said, told the story a million times. It's literally no the opposite of it. I, I they never once even remotely even. uh like suggested that they like wanted to get rid of me or anything like that. Literally, I did everything for the show. I did like more than I'm doing here. I did like lineups, social media, this, that, like I was doing everything. And I didn't get along with one of the other partners and I wanted him out. And I told them, guys, get rid of him. Like I'll buy his equity. Who was it? I mean, you know who it is. <laughs> it was, J- it it was JJ. No, JJ. JJ. And, and oh. I said, I why don't, did you want him out? Just a lot of different reasons. He was just like not a good person. He okay. was manipulative. Not a, like he's just very fake. Like just a lot of reasons. And I would ask him to do more work, and he didn't want to do it. Um, when I'm like, you're an owner. Like, why would you not want to work? Like, we're owners. That's our job is to put in the work. So like I would get frustrated and I'm like, listen, like, uh, can we get rid of him? And they didn't want to. And I got really frustrated and it got the, the relationship got more toxic. It got worse and worse. And eventually I went to them with an ultimatum and multiple times, different ultimatums. And I said, here's five different things that I'll be okay with. One is you get rid of him. Two is sell me more equity because the payouts each month were only based on equity. And I only had the third most equity, even though I was doing probably the most I was definitely doing the most work, but I was probably doing, you know, I don't know, let's say 50% of the work and I was getting paid 20% because of that's my equity. And the equity was uh, coming from the subscription fees. Uh, that was, yeah, that was the main thing, but yeah. yeah. And, uh, so I'm like, okay, get rid of them. I'll be happy. Give me like a salary before we do the payouts. Like that's normal for a business is like, if you're going to do payouts, like you have, you know, you pay people certain things first and you pay, you can pay one of the owners a salary if they work full time. Right. Um, I did that. I said that I said, I'll buy more equity. Um, I said, or I said, how about this? Everybody does more work. And I said, here's some things, some duties that everybody could, these people could do more. And they literally said no to all of those options. I came up with another ultimatum last minute. And I said, uh, listen, if you guys don't want to do this, I'm going to walk away. That's the fifth option. And they and they didn't believe me. And then I walked away. And that was it. And then literally, me and Nick were uh, about to meet with a casino, uh, one of the casinos. And I literally, from the parking lot, I sent them an email and said, I'm done. And they couldn't believe it. And that was it. That's literally it. 
So people think I got fired. Like it couldn't be more opposite of that. What was it? They just couldn't see your vision. They couldn't. No, like, it's it's that. Didn't want to spend money and lazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, they didn't believe like they believed that they were successful because they were live on the bike because they were on the air since 2005. They're like, oh, like he helped us build us up, but we're going to be successful no matter what. They didn't understand that like <clears throat> if I'm not there, they're going to fall apart and that I'm also going to go to another casino and start a show like they just didn't believe it or, or they just I don't know what it was. And uh, sure enough, as soon as I left, you know, the ratings went down a lot. Shows weren't as good, you know. What was this heads up uh, competition that you wanted to do that you wanted to sell to an, an agency or network huh? agency? Dave Tuckman told me about that, that there was like you were trying to work out a deal to create like a television show, almost a heads up tournament. Remember Dave Tuckman was telling us about Vague, that? Vaguely. And then he... Because I don't... I never heard Live of the Bike? Yeah. <clears throat> during, at Live of the Bike and uh, or maybe Tuck was trying to help you organize it or something he was telling us about that. it and he said that um what was the old the woman who owned it evelyn evelyn was just like no we're not doing that and he's like well if we invest some money into it you might have been maybe that's something with him and bart before me because i don't remember that oh yeah no he was he was just basically saying that evelyn would just never yeah never he's probably talking anything. about him and bart back in the day mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah because tuck and bart weren't involved in the show when i came there and then I brought them back on. What year did you start with them? Uh, the end of 16. Oh, okay. Because Live of the Bike started, I think, 2005, 05. right? Yeah. 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 So I brought Bart and Tuck back because I liked them a lot and I thought they were the best. Yeah. And I knew they had a falling out with Evelyn and with Lyman. <laughs> but I said, hey, <clears throat> if will you guys come back? And they said, if we just have to deal with you, then we'll do it. And so that then they came back for a little bit. Um, But yeah. So yeah, I mean... I don't know how we got to that conversation. No, but, I'm just, I'm just oh, you, curious you, you if like about, now you're like, like it, in a way you're, you're dealing with this company that didn't see any of your vision, didn't want to give you any, right. any <clears throat> leverage or want to see you succeed or want to see their own show succeed. And now I'm sure they're kicking themselves. Yeah, it is nice. Well, there, there's no company anymore, but well, yeah, yeah, I mean, but it all sure. fell and, apart shortly and, thereafter. And it worked out for us because like, I don't think we would be able to do even half of what we've done at Hustler if, like, let's say me and Nick, let's say Nick came on board the bike too and we were there. Like, we still wouldn't have been able to do what we were able to do at Hustler because the owners, the management, you know what I mean? And um, so it worked out, you know? Everything happens for a reason. Um, but yeah, certainly, like, I think when when we saw that we were, like, you know, so to speak, the number one show, right? And we took over for them very quickly we surpassed them in ratings we were crushing getting all the best games all Different the best numbers model like free, that free videos on youtube right but yeah. but when we passed them in numbers like and and it was very clear everyone was saying we were the number one show like that was a vindication like that was really nice right nick like that that was cool that like to just to to know like they didn't appreciate me enough and i felt disrespected <clears throat> and i left and it's a big risk and now we're crushing them like that was really cool to to know that so that was kind of a cool whenever the, that unofficially happened, um, that was like a cool moment. And then, you know, when they went out- It was the validation of validation, what, the, of what yeah. the truth was about right. LAPD. Right. LA LAPD. <laughs> LAPD. LAPD. And, and then when they went out of business, um, you know, that was, like we had already been so successful that it wasn't a big deal and we didn't even really talk about it much. But like, you know, the fact that they did go out of business was kind of funny in a way um, because it's like, they thought that they could be more successful than without me or then success more successful than us. Right. Knowing that we were probably going to start a show. Yeah. And yet we put them out of business in like a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I, I will say it on the mic. That was our goal. And it to was put them out of business. Yes. Not because there's poker isn't good for uh, the community because you see, we support the, the lodge. Grudge, you know? Yeah. I'll tell, uh, I've said it before. We support the lodge. We support like Eric Pearson, what he's doing. Like it, we're good. Like everything's cool. The reason it was for us, especially for me too, is because especially now after I've gotten to know Ryan and gotten close, I, I, I love him as a, like a family member. And, uh, he, he tells me a complete opposite about you. Yeah, so just... no, I do. I do. I <laughs> to do your face. This is what he says. Even when he was sitting here about a half an hour ago, I I was thinking I, I fucking really, I really like that kid. Yeah. But that, um, 
now that I, you know, back then when I, when I was going through that and Ryan even came to me and said, what do you think I should do? I said, you should follow what you think's right. And he did it. And it, and, and part of the validation needed to be that. And the other thing is too, you know, I told you they, they benched me because of my relationship with him. So I had a little spur under my, my, my saddle. And then when we started our show, JJ, I don't care about names, JJ, you know, went to our players, um, uh, a lot of our players and who almost didn't play on our show because the, he tried to do some conspiracy shit w- about our show and they came and even months later a couple of them apologized to us and said Fog, we really fucking drank the Kool-Aid but once we got to know him you know so for f- for me and I won't speak for Ryan that was the goal so um, you guys now have the most successful poker show and I know you can't sit still and this guy can't keep his mouth shut. But I'm just curious what the future for Hustler Casino Live is. Is there expansion plans? Are there bigger games coming our way? Something other than like a million dollar cash game? Give us, the viewers want to know what's next. Well, there's two things that we touched on that we don't want to talk about. And that is a big thing we want to do on the show if we can get it done. We'll talk about it at another time if we think we're Give us a it. hint. He can if he wants, but I'm Well, not. I mean, there's one show that we have a goal of that we just would be like the only thing bigger than the million dollar I, game. I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't say no, it. No, no, I'm not saying what it is. Yeah. I'm just saying we we, ha- we want to make something that's bigger than the million dollar game because like as we get something that's like, this is our biggest thing ever, like we always want to think about our next goal. Like how do we do even better, you know? And so yeah. so that's an idea, but we, we don't know if And there's two happen. other things that we also want to do but we want to get started and and do them first that i think will expand the the, yeah. the hustler brand in our high stakes poker brand i mean me and nick both i think we don't like sitting back and just like being satisfied like we want to keep building and keep getting better you yeah know? i mean i'll tell and, you and we've we've seen sorry we, we've seen so, like complaints even from fans over the last few months where they're like what's happened to hustler casino live it's gone downhill yeah it's it's boring it's what happened to the old good lineups this that you know and and i think it's one exaggeration it's two it's people get spoiled three um it's we're running five days a week around the year you're gonna get different things different times of the year like relax you know but but because of the you know those comments that especially sparks us to be like hey let's do something better let's do something different like let's change it up yeah and so a couple things that i think motivate us too is you know okay so once some of those people were out of the bike, I didn't really have too much of a hard on for for big bet poker, to be honest with you, not at all. And um, but you know, you know me, I'm in spaces, you know, jawing it up and stuff. And I, I was very, for once, I was very quiet on the subject, but I was getting hit a lot about, you know, are you worried about big bet poker? Oh my god, I think they're going to take over. You know, they're going to be <laughs> like, are they going to take the market share? And I didn't get cocky and say anything. I just said, you know, I don't know, we'll see. But it fucking burned inside for me to even go harder when that was happening. So it motivates me. Now I'm hearing the same thing about the commerce. And I know for him too, he's motivated because because of competition and because of that. So any, I think it's good to have competition. Any expansion plans? Yes. To another casino? To more shows or what? I mean, I'm cool with saying what I think we want to do next. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think... I think both like we want to have more content and we also, you know, if there's an opportunity to expand our product, our production company to another casino, another location so that we could have multiple shows going, you know, all the time. I think we're going to do that too. It's on our radar where that's going to be exactly. We don't know yet, but we're going to keep trying. We have ideas and you know, it's something that we've talked about for the last year. So, um, it's just a matter of getting these things done and doing them. Yeah. So you always got to be careful. Like when, when you're going, if you're going to start a new project, this isn't talking about like creating another million dollar game concept or something, but if you're going to start like another piece of your business, or you're going to expand into another state, or you're going to do these things, you have to be careful because what the mothership has to be healthy and you have to put more time into that than anything and not take your eye off the ball and go here and go here and let this stutter. So that's why you have to move at a certain clip and keep this going and and this is this is the this is the golden goose and if we're going to go try to build another golden goose you have to protect this one and you have to do it right and you have to do it at the right time and you have to make sure you can expand properly financially so that's why these things take a little a little longer i have a question for you cuz yeah. i i joke around a lot and he does get under my skin but i genuinely 
I do like Nick and I do think he gets a bad rap sometimes and he does it to himself. But just for the people out there, how how much of a contribution does Nick give to Hustler Casino Live? Because a lot of people see him as the guy who's just playing and you're doing all the work. But can you talk to us about your partnership with Nick and what that looks like? Sure, yeah. So obviously people see more the things that I'm doing because they know I'm building the lineups and the production and direction and social media and all that. But there's a ton of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that makes us successful that I just don't do and I don't want to do and I wouldn't be able to do that Nick does. We talked about earlier about the, the contract, right? Like that's something he was dealing with on and off for like seven months, right? Um, there was another thing we were negotiating with, trying to do something recently. Nick's literally doing presentations, negotiating for like months. Like literally I was never involved. I was never in the meetings. I don't want to be. That's Nick's lane. He's good at it. He's a master negotiator, master business guy. Um, he's he's great at communicating, at talking to people, all of that. Advertising, I literally do none of it. If I get like an email from someone, I'd literally just forward it to Nick. Nick does all that stuff. He sells the advertising. Um, I mean, I, like you could argue, not a, I don't know what percent you'd say, but a large percent of the money we've made is just because of literally Nick just talking to people, communicating, selling things. Um, it's just things I'm not good at, things I don't wanna do, things I wouldn't be able to do, I wouldn't be successful at. Um, and Nick's literally handling all of those things behind the scenes, the accounting, the administrative stuff, um, you know, payroll, employees, uh, screening employees, um, dealing with like relationship things like, um, hey Nick, you know, whatever it's a, a staff, person a commentator a player whatever hey nick like i'm having a hard time like you know explaining this to this person can you deal with it i got it calls them it's done we're good um like two players you know have an issue or they have an issue with something about the game nick literally handles it like all of that stuff i just like yeah it, it just like makes our show so much better makes my job so much easier um, One example I think for us, would, and the only thing I'm going to say is that I remember the most is when Robbie's husband was just chewing you up at, at, at Jack Oh, at, in person. Yeah, yeah. And so you just it, stepped in. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying, told like, those yeah. are the type of things that have to be because we have different personalities. Yeah, that's I'm all. just, that's just not how I am. And so, yeah, Nick's good at those things. And I think that people don't really understand what he's doing because these are all behind the scenes things. Um, but this is these are literally the most important things that make the business go, right? Like just player issues and um like oh man i remember some things with like like a couple different staff members i'll say um that had issues at different times like just arguments and emotional things and just like i'm the way i am like i might come across the wrong way right when i'm like mad and like like someone is mad about something and i'm like angry back I might just like say the wrong thing and offend them or like piss them off or, you know, say something I'm not supposed to say or whatever. And so like, I'll bring Nick in and I'll be like, Nick, I can't deal with this. Like this person is saying this and doing this. Like I need you to handle it. And he'll literally just handle it and make them feel better. Didn't you handle getting Tony G? No, uh, we handled that together. We both made a decision to do something to get that. Um, when that was falling apart, we were both making calls and Ryan and I met and and I said, I think we need to do this. He called him, did that, and he, and he played. And, you know, another example was I called Dennis Dave to try to get him to cancel you, his family trip to yeah, Alaska. Like, the, the point is, like, Nick helps... Like <laughs> with Nick, lineups more than people. Yeah, think. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Nick, what do you have a private jet? I'm not aware of. Like I'm sending I'll the jet for you, Tony one. G. <laughs> I'll fucking rent one. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ne he Tony Tony said, uh, "Listen, if you get me a college <laughs> volleyball team to my hotel, then I'll come." <laughs> and Nick well, was like, he, "Nick was like, well, I happen to know. Do you one. want Ivy League or do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, doesn't he travel with like 21 models anyway? Yeah. 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 No, but uh, no, it's just like a lot of. Yeah, there's just a lot of things going on behind the scenes with like conversations and, and Nick helps a lot with those things. And um, yeah, like he's not the one deciding like this is the, the lineup. But when there's a question of like, should we do this or should we do that? Like, you know, we're deciding together. 
and um, he's helping with that and he's way better than me at like communicating with like when there's like an issue yeah, you wouldn't think so because, as, as Val says, you know, I'll I'll be fighting and arguing and put my foot in my mouth and all that. But again, I will say now in the last six months, there's a rhyme and reason why I do it. Before it was just emotions, and um, and first let me edify Ryan before I say this. Like first of all, and I've said this before to you, there is no better game runner and person with instincts to make a live stream work when it comes to the player base and the game structure and everything else. Ryan is the fucking best in the world. But what he's saying, what he's trying to say is, is like, there's just, and him and I had this problem, but we've worked it out. Like Ryan wants to say, if I need to be in a professional conversation, I can be in one. I know that, I know that that doesn't like appear to be a truth, right? But I know how to do that. I, my whole thing is communication. That's what I do best. And so there's been times where, this is a perfect example, where Ryan is literally trying to say one thing to me and he is offending the shit out of me in the process because of his, the way he communicates it. Well, that would happen sometimes with like a player or a employee or whatever. And so I wouldn't even know it until Nick would tell me it. afterwards. And I'm like, dude, you can't, you know. So that's why we just, we have strengths and weaknesses. I He has strengths that I just don't have. Like for him to be able to handle all those people and to, and, and to swallow like, Maybe pride or swallow, like having people say players getting pissed off. I could never do that. I'd be like, hey, fuck you, right? And then we wouldn't have that player, which he can do that. You so, did that to Jerry once. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when Jerry and You know what else me. we were on? <laughs> you know what else? Fuck you. We were on, on air. <laughs> But anyways, I actually, I actually heard that you guys fought a lot during filming, and I'm wondering did. if you guys are getting along better now. We are during. Well, what? the director. I went to L. A. to get interviewed for my portion of. Oh, the for the documentary. The documentary. We were fighting right like, around oh, that a lot. And here. Yeah. We were just chatting, and he's like, "Yeah, we got like hours of footage of Ryan and Nick arguing." I'm like, "Really? I thought they got along. Are you guys getting along better now? The we get along. No, we worked? always get along. We always it, get along. Again, there's a there's like, just because you like argue and disagree and whatever, it's just like. The, the question is at the end of it, like, are you good? And like, you know, I mean, we've had issues over the years where we, something, I said something the wrong way or he did or whatever, but like, it, it's like they say about old couples, right? Like you never want to like go to sleep uh, mad, Angry. right? We right? never have. Yeah, we never have, yeah. yeah. Oh, trust me, uh, I've broken up with him several times, so. Yeah, what did it. you say? What did you say to me? Uh, it was the funniest line ever. Billy was in there and there, we were, they were filming, I forgot. They were actually filming us because in here, right? In my in the other room because yeah. we were. I was so. I'm not going to go into why because I barely remember why because it's always so stupid. But <laughs> we got in a disagreement and while we were filming something and organically we just started fighting and I forgot they were there and I remember I was yelling and he's like, I forget what you said. You, what you, I said? No, yeah, you said something like to me like, like, are you just going to keep yelling? And he was kind of a little bit tearing up because he was so like frustrated and I go well I don't know are you going to keep crying and we were like <laughs> and fucking Billy was sitting there and Billy's like <laughs> just, <laughs> but we were we were like really mad but the thing is is like we both under like for, first of all at the core of any relationship if you like each other and you respect each other you can get through it and if your goal is to always be good and two people have that same goal, you will always be good. And 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 our stuff has been trivial. And, uh, you know, and there is, no, I don't have one bit of like, they call it like scar tissue of like a little resentment. I have zero. I have zero. He's the purest fucking, I trust Ryan more than I trust anyone in my life financially. No, financially to have my back. And so because of that, there isn't anything he could say to me that would, uh, get me to have a grudge against him. I mean, I, I couldn't have a better partner. Oh, it's true. I love this for you too. No, but it's, but it's true. No, you I know. know. He yeah. talks about you even without the cameras on. That's when you know uh, who has your back is when, what they say about you when you're not around. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So anyways, um, whatever. That's a likewise. I, I don't think, you know, people say things and whatever that don't know really what's going on, but I, I, I don't think we would even be as half as successful um, as we are um, without all the work that Nick puts in and does behind the scenes and the things like there, I don't, there's nobody else that I could think of really that has like the combination of things that Nick has that 
we'd be able to be as dominant and successful as we are now. Like, and we wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for right. Ryan. Like, I'm sure there's yeah. better, That's like, simple. I not just say, I'm sure there's like other people that like are amazing business people, of right? And like have some of the skills Nick has, but they don't have like the passion for poker and the understanding of the community that Nick has. Um, and so it's like the combination of everything that Nick has to be able to understand what? how Why to, are you smiling? <laughs> to specifically, you know, know how to make things work business wise and poker wise and you know knowing our players and our community and you know it's the relationships that we have with like all the players that we play with and all that look when when garrett went on to to doug pokes and basically said you know i don't do shit i'm the fucking you know whatever he said and then he tells that to berkey the thing is 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 garrett knows differently but he's on one because i'm the one that is the truth teller and that's just when you're the truth teller and you're willing to go in front of a mic and say the truth and not and say a name and do those things you are not going to always be popular and um i I can't function the other way the other way makes me feel yucky oh you're very popular trust me you're very popular (laughs) i'm popular yeah i mean i am in a bad way yeah i don't know about good or bad but you are in a bad way but that gets views and you're definitely in touch with your community very much so yeah on spaces every night ladies and gentlemen (laughs) yeah um is there anything else you want to leave us with any like anything cool that happened at hustler or anything you you want to announce to the public that to your fans (laughs) <laughs> not really <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah well listen i'm glad you came in uh it's been a long time since the actual community has heard you and we are partners and um i think it'll I, re- be received well i have one actually last question and i'm sad that we didn't get into it and i know we have five minutes left but uh uh regarding the like la private games all the like the cheating accusations that have come out and i know that you guys have now taken out um what's his name that was the mars Mars that was the main person being accused like how much pressure do you have with like all these la private games and shit goes on and then the players could potentially Mm -hmm. not the cheating players but you know people go into private games and then also play at hustlers so i'm not saying that they're cheating but i'm saying they could be a part of something that's going on that's nefarious elsewhere and then there's bad reputations and there's mm. gossip. Like, how do you deal with all that when you're picking yeah. players for the games? It's a good question. So I think that we get a lot of uh, heat for that. Um, just like, you know, oh, all, all these players happen, these, you know, things happen on Hustler Casino Live. Like, oh man, that, that's just what they do. Like, you know, people give a shit for that, like all the time, right? You see it. And before I get into that part of the question, I want to say this, okay. People give us so much shit for that because we're on, we have the most content, we're on five days a week, right? We're in LA where a lot of things happen, right? Um, But you don't hear anything like that on other shows when things happen to players, right? Like you had a guy that played on, and I'm not trying to call out anyone, I'm just trying to explain how people are so negative against us and don't really care about other streams. Like Poker Go, they had... This guy, Lazaro, who played in like all their big games and lost millions and then went to jail for 15 years recently for something, you can look it up, for something crazy, right? And they found out he was laundering money through, you know, Aria um, to play on Poker Go and all this, right? And uh, nobody, not a single person has come out and said like, oh my God, like, I can't believe they let him play and blah, 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 shame on them, right? Sean Shikan goes to jail, right? For same thing for something really bad, right? No one says like, "Oh my God!" Like Poker After Dark. No like, one's watching they, them. They're they, watching you guys. Like, the, you know, Poker After Dark back in the day. Like, how do they let him play? Like, he's a bad person. Like, you don't like once you find out someone did something wrong, then they don't play. But like, if we knew, they wouldn't play. But you can't like get mad at uh, a show, a production for letting someone play before you ever knew they were a bad guy. Yeah. Like, you know, it happens everywhere. There was that guy in Texas that went to jail or whatever, Bilbo or whatever, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's like. Do you think if we knew somebody was like laundering money or if we knew somebody was cheating that we would like let them play in our show? Obviously not. Hell no. We are so worried about that stuff. But isn't so, that the casino's problem to right, figure out if so, someone's laundering? Right. So that's what I'm saying. So the casino has a compliance department, right? They do a lot of due diligence. Like they're, the, if, if they fail at something, like that's on them. We are separate. We are a show. We're trying to put together the best characters. Um, 
the best characters in the, the best, best games. games that we can put together, right? Like um, the casino knows they have to deal with all this stuff because if they fail on something, they're going to get fined millions of dollars. Okay. Right. So, but that's not us. Like we're not doing compliance checks. Like people ask like, what's this person's job? Whatever, blah, blah. Like, okay, we can find out. But like, we don't need to know uh, necessarily. Like, is it good for us to know? Like, yeah, maybe. You know, especially if we're like worried about somebody, but like we don't necessarily have to go. Listen, you're not allowed to play unless you give us your, you know, operating agreement of your business to show us what you do. Like, it's just like it's not. It's just like I'm shocked. You know, should, there's an operating they, agreement in a business. Should they know if people are being staked at the <laughs> table by other people at the table? Yes, because that's in our player agreement, our waiver they sign. Oh, you it have says a that waiver you for can't, that. You can't do that. A lot of um, people of don't course. know that. But but yeah, I'm saying they don't know that you have a waiver. Oh yeah, they just oh, yeah. assume that. Oh yeah, yeah, they have a waiver. Like that can no one. We have can a be, waiver for that. No one all can the other ever. Shit. There can never be any financial tie from one person to another person in the same game. Um, so yeah, if like someone comes to us and says, "Hey, like, you got to check this out. I think this guy's, you know, being staked by this player as a piece of player." Okay, like we're gonna look into it, and if it's true, or if we think it might be true, like we're not gonna let that person play. That happens. Um, if if, if someone comes to us and says like, hey, I think this guy is this bad thing. He's selling drugs or doing this or whatever. Like you might not want this guy in our show. Like we're going to look into it. And if well, I'd want to get some prices from him, but he yeah. couldn't play, you know. Uh, and, and if we find out that it's something that's going to be a bad look, then they're not going to work on the bite. They're not going to play. Um, but otherwise, like, you know, if we think these people are decent people and they're not committing a crime and they're not doing something bad and, you know, whatever. and Money and checks pe out. People like playing. Yeah. And people like playing with them then like we'll invite them if they're good for the game. And if we, if nobody had any inkling at all, and then six months later we find out this person was doing this shady thing that we had no clue about, then like it's hard to say like, how did you not research and find out? Well, how did the rest of the world not know this guy was laundering money or this guy was cheating in a home game? You know what I mean? Like it, for the Mars thing, like if any of those guys that were playing in that game came to me and showed me a picture of the guy that they were playing with and was like, hey, do you know this guy? Like, we're playing with this guy. I would be like, holy shit, I know that guy's a cheater. Like, I would have been like, get the hell out was of that, that game. Was that the case yeah. with that dealer? You knew the No, guy. no, not the dealer, the other, the player, the player. The other, the oh, other, you one knew. Of, one of the players. Yeah, remember yeah. I told you because I played well, with I him forgot. in Vegas. And yeah. so, Oh, like, that's right, where yeah. you felt you got Yeah, but like, they yeah. never showed anyone and like, so, you know, they didn't, if, if they suspected it, they shouldn't have played. And if they wanted to like ask other people, hey, do you know this guy? They should have, right? And um, how the hell would I know that somebody's doing something in a private game? All I know is like what I know, and I know that players like him, uh, pe people are friends with him, um, everything's legit on our show. Um, compliance wise, he checks out. He's, Meaning he's, Mars. Yeah, he's good, he's decent for the game. Like that's what we know. And we find out something other uh, afterwards, like we can't know everything. And sure, there's been people on the show that have played that like something's happened, but something's come out afterwards. But like, keep in mind, like we have thousands of hundreds and thousands of players playing on our show. We have the most content. Like we have the best chance for somebody to play on our show who's doing something right but 90 yeah we do the most shows we have the most content yeah, but, and we're the most watched but so 90 something per, 90 percent yes. 95 99 whatever percent of our players are like good legit people that love poker yeah and once in a blue moon you're gonna find some bad apple but that happens on any show um that happens in any poker game that happens in private games in la like it's poker, it's gambling. Unfortunately, it attracts some bad seeds. But, you know, me and Nick, we've met some really good people in our group, in our community that we play with that, like, are, like, actual good friends, people that I'll invite yeah. to my wedding one day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people that, like... We we go we we party you know we had like uh, I had a party at my house recently we had a we New have Year's to have another us. hour to ask about this wedding one day yeah <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> hypothetically <laughs> but like you know we have actual good people that we uh, I just went to Ronnie's birthday party last week you know what I mean like we have like great people in our group and just because you know you find people one out of every three hundred people or whatever ends up doing something bad it. I don't think that should reflect poorly on us. Like we're trying to put together a poker show and we're doing our best due diligence and trying to put together the best games that people enjoy playing. And, and that's really all we can do. Yeah.
Word. Our producer needs to go. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. Yeah. You got anything else to add? Nothing. Uh, you good? <laughs> I'm good. All Thanks right. for having I, me. Uh, thank you so much for coming. It's yeah. nice seeing you again. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Nick Fertucci Show. I am Nick Fertucci. And for Valerie Brill and my partner, Ryan Feldman, NV out. <laughs>